Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see title what if Naruto got the eternal Mangekyu Sharingan of Shisui Uchiha. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. It was night time in Konohagakure no Sato, most of the people in the village were sleeping, while a few Anbu were patrolling the area. Suddenly alarms went off and news spread among the ranks that Uzumaki Naruto has stolen the forbidden scroll of sealing and the Hokage has ordered immediate capture of Naruto. As many of the shinobi of Konoha were searching for Naruto, Mizuki Echunin who works as an assistant teacher in the academy went to Uruka's home, knowing he had a knack of finding Naruto when no one could. As Uruka opened the door to his house when someone knocked on it, he came face to face with Mizuki who had a panicked look on his face and when asked why, Mizuki quickly told Uruka what has happened and both quickly went in different directions in search of Naruto. Meanwhile deep in the forest surrounding Konoha we see one Uzumaki Naruto casually sitting with a large scroll on his lap waiting for someone. But there was a big change in Naruto who was sitting in the forest to the one the village was used to. First was the lack of horrendous orange jumpsuit that he is seen wearing, instead he was wearing a black t-shirt with a red spiral on the back and black anbu pants. Also there was no large stupid grin on his face instead he had a blank look on his face which made reading him extremely difficult. But the biggest change was that instead of his usual goggles which he wore on his forehead there was a black forehead protector with Konoha's symbol on it. Naruto had his eyes closed as he recalled how it all started. Flashback a seven-year-old Naruto Uzumaki was practicing his aim by throwing practice shuriken and kanai at a target pole. His surrogate grandfather who also was the Sandame Hokage of Konoha had promised him that he would be able to join the academy when he became nine years old, so here he was preparing himself as much as he could for the academy. Unknown to him there were two groups who were watching him. One of two groups comprised of two shinobi belonging to the Anbu organization of Konoha the first one was Neko and the other was Raven and both had personal reasons to ask for this assignment. Seeing villagers hostility towards Naruto due to his burden the Sandame Hokage decided to assign Anbu to protect him from villagers if they ever got bold as to try to hurt him physically, while the other group comprised of two Konoha chunin who had lost their parents in the Kayubi rampage and were itching to teach the demon brat a lesson. The Anbu just assumed that the two Chunin were doing their usual round hence didn't pay attention to them. Naruto decided that he has trained enough and made his way towards a waterfall he discovered, to spend time alone. The two teams followed them but the Anbu decided to conceal their presence from both Naruto and the two Chunin. Once they all reached the waterfall the two Chunin attacked Naruto but Naruto was surprisingly able to dodge them and when they saw his eyes they were shocked as they were not the usual blue but were red with two Tomo in each eye. Before the two Chunin could make sense of how he had Sharingan they were struck by the two Anbu. Neko Ne Chan, Raven Nisan, Naruto said as he ran towards the two Anbu and hugged them. What most of the people in Konoha didn't knew except the Sandame Hokage was that Naruto was being trained by both Neko and Raven from the age of six when he activated his Sharingan while defending himself from a Chunin who attacked him due to his misplaced hatred. But before he could do any serious damage both Raven and Neko had rendered him unconscious while Naruto had collapsed but not before showing his Sharingan to both the Anbu. The Chunin was made an example by the Hokage by executing him publicly while it was decided by the Hokage that Naruto would be trained secretly by both Raven and Neko in shinobi arts. During the year both Raven and Neko revealed their identities to Naruto as Shisui Uchiha and Yugo Azuki respectively. While Raven helped him with his Sharingan, Taijutsu and Genjutsu, Yugo taught him Kenjutsu and Ninjutsu. When Naruto asked them why many civilians looked him with hatred all he got as an answer was that one day he would understand. Tragedy struck when Naruto was eight year old and the Uchiha clan was massacred by Itachi Uchiha. He remembered the week before the massacre when Shisui visited him and gave him a scroll with the promise that he would only open it after his death. When Naruto woke up the next day after crying himself to sleep he discovered that when he channeled chakra to his eyes he noticed his Sharingan had evolved to its three tomo stage, but something told him to channel more chakra and when he did it changed again. His iris had turned into that of a six-pointed star while the appearance of a blooming flower surrounded it. Curious about his new form of Sharingan he opened Shisui's letter hoping to find about more about his new eyes. 
Dear Naruto, if you are reading this then I am most likely dead. I have written this scroll before embarking onto my latest mission. My latest mission is the most dangerous mission I have ever taken but it is highly important for the safety of the village. Do not worry Naruto. If I have passed on I want you to move on. You have already awakened your Sharingan and I know you will surpass everyone from our entire clan. You also have the same beliefs as the Shodai Hokage, the will of fire. You will not fall to the hatred that has consumed one too many Uchiha. My only regret is that I will not be able to see you who I have come to see as my Autodo become the most powerful Uchiha to grace the elemental nations. I want you to carry on my dream. I know that one day you will be the one who will liberate the Uchiha's curse of hatred. Autodo, I have taken my eyes and sealed it into a stable glass chamber filled with chakra containment liquid. The vial itself is in one of the compartments of this seal. If you should awaken the Mangekio Sharingan, do not overuse it. Eventually you will go blind. The only way to gain the powers of this dujutsu is to implant new Mangekio within your eyes. Do not worry I have taken my two sans eyes who also had the Mangekio. Remember if you do awaken the Mangekio, you must implant them into your own eyes eventually. I have also packed a seal which would help with the transplant. The instructions on how to use it are in the scroll. Also, go to the Naka River and head a few miles east from the usual spot where we used to hang out. You will find a ruin of sorts surrounded by Shinto threads and strings. Stand by the edge of the ruins and perform these hand seals. Remember it can't done without the Sharingan and the person who enters it must be an Uchiha. Tatsu. Nei. Tori. Mi. Inu. Tatsu. Uma. Ushi. Uma. Yu. Saru. Hitsuji. Tora. Mi. These are the hand seals for the secret entrance to the Uchiha stone tablet chamber. I want you to go there and read it. It will explain a lot about the Uchiha clan ancestry and the Sharingan's abilities itself. Remember Aodoto, do not fall to the arrogance and hatred that has tainted our clan for so if you find this delivered to you by not me, you can figure it was Yugao. She also looks at you like her little brother. I want you to know this Aodoto. I love you, stay safe and grow up to be the fine shinobi I know you will be. Your brother Shisui. Naruto was crying freely some time he wiped his tears and promised himself to never fall to the curse of hatred. He sealed the letter again along with Shisui's eyes and the seal meant to help in the transplant. After a week he decided to check out the Uchiha stone tablet chamber. Walking towards its location he found the Shinto boundary and saw the cavern that was digging itself below into the ground. He stood in front of the cavern and activated his Sharingan and looked around carefully for anyone. Seeing that there was no chakra signature he took a moment to consider his next course of action, he decided to enter the shrine. There he saw the Uchiha stone tablet chamber, which was mentioned by Shisui in his letter. At first he was not able to read its contents, and then he activated his Sharingan and saw that he could now understand what was written on the tablet. The first contents of the stone tablets had contained general notes of the Sharingan. Its functions and abilities to copy any technique down to the last detail and make a perfect copy but had failed to mention the fact that there was no guarantee the copied technique would be as powerful as the original technique it was derived from. Shisui had explained this to him while training also contained information on the maturity of the Sharingan, stating the minute each Sharingan eye obtained three Tomo the Sharingan had been perfected. The next content was the details on the life Madara Uchiha, how he played a huge part during the Warring Clan era mostly fighting against the Senju clan leader, Hashirama Senju. Later he assisted his rival in creation of Konoha but lost to Hashirama for the title of first Hokage even with the help of Kayubi. He couldn't read any further so he activated his Mangekio Sharingan which stung a bit making him realize that he was not powerful enough to wield them. It also mentioned the ability of Mangekio Sharingan's ability to control a tailed beast. While mentioning that the overuse of Mangekio Sharingan would cause eventual blindness and the only way to escape it was to take another Mangekio and transplant it. When Naruto was 10 years old he had figured out his Mangekio's ability as it came automatically to him. He had Amaterasu, Heavenly Illumination, in his right eye and Sukuyomi, Moon Reader, in his left eye, but as the tablet said he was slowly going blind from the overuse of his eyes so with the help of Yugo, he transplanted Shisui's eyes into his own. He had gained eternal Mangekio Sharingan. His original eyes had changed to accommodate the new ones. No longer did his resemble a flower blooming. Now they resembled something different. 
His iris had been a six-pointed star but now they resembled a triangle with three finely pointed ends while the flower surrounding it had morphed. Before there were six petals surrounding the six-pointed star, all six had melded and become a total of three different shapes. If those three shapes were put together, they would form a regular iris. For three years in the academy Naruto played the fool as he was told by the Sandame to not show his real skill set until becoming a genin where he would come directly under Hokage's authority. Flashback end now here he was waiting for Mizuki, earlier that day Ruka and Mizuki had failed him due to his incapability of performing the clone technique but he had sensed a genjutsu being performed on him by Mizuki but did not dispel it as it would look suspicious. Later that day when he was about to go to Sandame about this but was approached by Mizuki to pass an alternate exam by stealing the forbidden scroll of sealing. After getting the details from Mizuki, Naruto went straight to Sandame and told him everything. Where the Sandame decided to give this Naruto as a mission to capture the traitor with proof. So here he was waiting for the traitor with a fake forbidden scroll of sealing. Suddenly he sensed a chakra signature approaching him which he recognized as Aruka's. Naruto. What the hell were you thinking stealing the forbidden scroll of sealing, and what happened to your clothes? Uruka shouted seeing Naruto in a completely different attire and with a calm expression on his face. Naruto not wanting to put Uruka in any danger put him in a sleep genjutsu through his sharingan and hid him behind one of the trees. After a few minutes Mizuki came with a large fuma shuriken on his back. Mizuki for trying to make an academy student steal the forbidden scroll of sealing you have committed treason and hence are arrested for your crimes, surrender peacefully, Naruto said in a cold tone unlike the usual happy tone he used. Mizuki just stared at him and then started laughing maniacally. And you would be the one to arrest me, you don't even know the truth about yourself, Mizuki said. Naruto didn't let it show on his face but he was intrigued by what Mizuki was talking about, but he knew now was not the time. Hence he just disappeared while Mizuki was laughing and reappeared behind him using body flicker technique and knocked him off. After that he woke Uruka up and told him to call the Anbu and said that all would be explained in the Hokage's office. Once both Naruto and Uruka had reached Hokage's office, the Sandame explained everything to Uruka about Naruto's training by two Anbu while not telling him about their identities while also telling him why Naruto behaved like he behaved in the academy. Naruto then asked about the truth that Mizuki was talking about during their conversation, to which Sandame replied that he would tell him when he came for his ninja registration next week. Sandame also gave him his pay for the B rank mission he completed. A week later, Naruto was wearing his new clothes consisting of a blue half sleeve t shirt and black pants. He had shuriken pouches tied on both his shoulders while a kanai holster pouches were strapped onto his right thigh. Said costume would have cost him a fortune had he not gone with the Sandame, while he bought most of his things under the use of Henge, the Sandame insisted that he would go with him to buy him clothes as a gift for the start of his shinobi career. As he was making his way towards Hokage's tower to submit his ninja registration doans, he was greeted by Serutobi himself outside of the tower, because Serutobi never had his meetings outside his office, let alone his tower. It was also the way Serutobi looked at him. He was sure he saw pity and guilt in those old eyes. Then afterwards he was directly taken to the Hokage's office with Serutobi telling him that he would take care of it while he took his doans. Serutobi also apologized for what was about to transpire, although the twelve-year-old didn't know what to make of that. When they got to the office, Serutobi told Naruto to keep an open mind and he hoped that Naruto could one day forgive him before opening the door and changing his life forever. When he walked into the office he was greeted with the view of the Yandaimi, the Yellow Flash, his true hero, sitting in the seat that would originally be Serutobi's place. There was a woman with him too, with long red hair and two kids at her side. The first was a girl looked no older than three years old and had short red hair like the woman. The other looked about his age and had a lot of similar physical qualities that matched his Warok no Jutsu. He was surprised to see his hero alive and well. But what happened next shattered his image in the Yandaimi. Ah, Naruto, I'm glad you're here, Minato said with that foxy grin that Naruto couldn't help but compare to his own. Look at you, so handsome already. You have your father's looks all right, the redhead woman gushed. Father? Naruto registered that word pretty quickly because as far as he knew he was an orphan and his parents died. That's right son, I told you he'd take after me didn't I, Kashina? Minato said looking at his wife. Tch, whatever, he still has my face, 
Kashina playfully jabbed, never noticing what a grave mistake their antics had made. Naruto, I'm sure you're familiar with the Yandaimi Hokage, and this is Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze. They're your parents, Serutobi finished with a grim expression. Naruto just stood there in shock for a long time, he didn't move nor look like he was breathing. That kind of behavior worried his parents. Sochi, are you okay? Kashina asked, looking concernedly at her son. Now I know what you must be thinking. How come it took us this long to come home? Well, with Jiraiya and Tsunade taking care of you, we just figured we'd wait a while and train Naruko a bit more. Why I bet those two Sanin had been beating you to the ground with how serious they were when it came to training. Oh yes. I'd like you to meet you two sisters. Minato said gleefully as he indicated to the older sister holding the little redhead. Is that Naruto Nisan? The little girl asked her older sister softly. Yes Narumi-chan, that's Oni-san, Naruko said warmly to her, rocking the little girl gently. She walked up to Naruto and stood at a respectable distance and cleared her throat. Hello Naruto Nisan. I'm Naruko and I'm your younger twin. This is Narumi and she's the youngest of us. I've been waiting to meet you for so long Nisan and I'm so honored, Naruko said. She smiled brightly at her brother and bowed. Haha. They've always wanted to meet you ever since we told them they had an older brother. Gosh, it seemed like yesterday when the queue. That is enough Minato, Serutobi cut in. He understood Minato's excitement in seeing his son after all the years he staged his death and left Naruto in the hands of Tsunade and Jiraiya. But Minato didn't know of what happened while he left Naruto at the mercy of vengeful villagers, who despised the Kayubi brat, nor did Naruto know about the Kayubi altogether, and Minato was just digging himself a bigger grave with every word he spoke. What is it Serutobi? Minato asked. I told you to hear me out before you did anything but did you listen? No. You have no idea what you've done. You have no idea what a grave mistake you and Kashina made, Serutobi said with a frown. What are you talking about Serutobi? Kashina questioned confusedly. So you know them? Naruto asked, his bangs covering his eyes from everyone. Yes Naruto, I know Minato and Kashina and I cannot begin to tell you how sorry I am for not informing you about them, Serutobi said sadly. He wouldn't be surprised if Naruto hated him. Hell, right now, he hated himself. He only knew about Minato and Kashina's disappearance after the Kayubi attacked. He found a letter stating that Minato had trusted Jiraiya and Tsunade to look after their child together since they were both the child's godparents. They would train Naruko on controlling the Kayubi's chakra, under the knowledge that Naruto only had the soul. Minato sealed a part of the Kayubi in both children, but it didn't work out that way. He couldn't say anything because it was an S rank secret, sweetie. Kashina cooed. And I'm sure you know all about that since you're in the Ninja Academy, if what I read is correct, Minato said, looking at a paper with a proud smile. Minato, we really need to talk. These are not happy times and I'm sorry to say that things didn't go the way you hoped all those years ago. Serutobi said, staring down at Naruto in sadness. Am I free to go, Serutobi-sama? Naruto asked emotionlessly. But Sochi, yes. You're free to go Naruto and I'm sorry, Serutobi said, ignoring the furious look Kashina sent his way as Naruto left the office. After that Naruto just locked himself in his apartment and as added protection sealed his home with the most powerful security seal he knew. He ignored the pleas of the villagers who were apologizing to him. On one hand he was happy to know the identity of his parents but that happiness was only there for a second before it turned into anger the next moment as his own parents had left him abandoned him in a village that hated his guts just for a stupid reason. Serutobi had told him that his father to which he replied that the man isn't his father so Serutobi with regret in his eyes continued, that the Yandaimi had sealed the soul of Kayubi into him while sealing the chakra into Naruko, while explaining to him that he left him in the village under the care of his godparents, Jiraiya and Tsunade of the Sanin but both of them left for reasons unknown to him, the next day when he came to visit. He listened to everything and just said to leave him alone. He just couldn't stay mad at Serutobi for too long, the old man had been there for him, while he also had lied to him, he had done so to protect him. As for his godparents who had both broken his parents' trust and abandoned him, if he ever met them, he would tell them just how much of a failure are they as opposed to how the history books portray them. Now came on to the part of his parents, he decided to be indifferent to them and treat them as he would treat any stranger. 
He knew he felt hatred in his heart towards his parents but he had promised Shisui he would overcome the curse of hatred. Word got around about the Yandaimi's return and the village celebrated in the honor of their hero, even after it was revealed he faked his own death. But the celebrations were short term as Minato expressed his disappointment and fury for what they did to his own flesh and blood. A lot of villagers were confused on that but Minato soon cleared that up with the shocking declaration of Naruto being his son. Kashina went on a rampage beating and sending anyone who ever treated her son badly, it got so bad that she was restrained and put to house arrest by Minato himself. Kashina in her anger said that he didn't care about their son to which Minato replied that he would gladly put himself in their son's position if ever given the chance. He also added that while he had to protect the villagers as he was the Hokage again, didn't mean he wouldn't punish them, as many stores who refused or threw their son out belonged to Namikaze family which was a good 65% of total shops in Konoha and had decided to fire those people while declaring that anyone who hired them would lose business with Namikaze owned firms. This led to a lot of people being fired and going poor, when they asked why were they punished so harshly all they got as a reply was why didn't they serve Naruto fairly and no one wanted to speak of Naruto as, demon brat, in front of his own parents. Both parents knew they messed up and they even tried putting the blame on Jiraiya and Tsunade, who weren't present, but a heartbroken Naruko told them it was as much as their fault for trusting people that weren't family to Naruto's care and they should have kept track on what was happening to him from the beginning instead of blindly trusting someone with their own child. The family knew they deserved nothing but hatred from the boy but they were resolute to do whatever it took to get Naruto in their lives again. Hokage's office currently Minato was sitting on the Hokage chair while seeing the list of Genin graduates of this year. Okay, after long deliberation, I have decided on the Janin that will be assigned to the passing Genin, Minato said. Team 1 will consist of. Since there had to be changes because of the addition of my daughter to the roster, I have decided that Team 7 will consist of Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and Naruko Uzumaki Namikaze with Kakashi. I want to be in that squad, Kashina said suddenly as she appeared in the room holding papers. She had been helping Minato with his paperwork ever since he came back to being Hokage and it left her no time for her children. She desperately wanted to mend the shattered bond she had with her son, she would never stop thinking of herself as a horrible mother until she did. This was the biggest opportunity she had because now she could see Naruto all the time. She felt so disgusted with herself for being so careless when it came to her baby. If Jiraiya and Tsunade ever showed their faces here, she would make sure to make them suffer but right now, Naruto was more important. She will be there for him and no one was going to stop her, not even her husband. Kashina-sama, I've already been picked, Kakashi was cut off with a glare. And I should care why, I want to be on that team. Kashina said looking at Minato seriously. No one even thought of opposing and she was glad for that. Kashina, Kakashi was handpicked. Minato was cut off with Kashina's chakra flaring. I don't care if Kami herself was chosen, I want to be on that squad, now. Kashina shouted and everyone knew there was no stopping her, besides, she also had the right to request a squad since she was a qualified Janin. I got a headache, Shikaku said. He understood why Kashina was doing this. When she was pregnant with the twins, she had always expressed her deep love for them before they were even born. So to find out that her own son had a horrible life growing up must have been a huge blow to the loving woman. This was so troublesome. Naruto was getting ready to go to the academy as he has been told as all the graduates had to attend the academy for one last time to know about their genin team and who will be their junin leader. He was wearing a blue half-sleeves t-shirt and black pant with black forehead protector. As he traveled towards the academy most of the villagers gave him a wide space, some had a guilty look on their faces while most of them had a fearful expression, which he ignored. He entered the classroom before almost anyone else. The only person sitting there was Shino. He gave a polite nod to him which Shino returned, while he sat beside him. Unknown too many Shino was one of the few kids who never isolated him. He even helped Naruto in one of his pranks, which he performed on Mizuki during the academy. Slowly all the kids started entering and the classroom filled which the chatter of children excited to become shinobi and going on different kind of missions. As soon as Naruko entered the classroom she first noticed Naruto and was happy to see him as he had locked himself in his apartment and missed the academy for the six days when she had joined. 
she completely understood his situation and had shouted at her parents for trusting people who were not family to take care of his son and not even checking up on him. She then noticed the seat beside Hinata was empty so she went there. Hello, is this seat taken? Naruko asked the shy girl if her eyes were anything to go by. Uh, no, Hinata stuttered and looked away. Hey, Naruko come sit with us, Ino shouted. Naruko made no indication she even heard Ino. She knew all their names because her father had told her on the possible candidates of people who she will most likely be teamed up with and she hoped it wasn't one of them. She had been in the academy for six days, in which Naruto was absent, and she had a definitive picture on who acts like what here. She knew their kind, fan girls. She hated girls who disgraced themselves as Kunoichi just for an idiot's attention, that idiot being Sasuke Uchiha. Sasuke Uchiha, she only had one word for him bastard. He was an egotistical attention seeker, who relished in the spotlight and loved to show off. She had seen Sasuke checking her out a number of times and it made her like a naked target for his pleasure, he wasn't the only boy doing it but he was the most noticeable one since he didn't ashamed of his tactics, bastard. She noticed Hinata a lot too. The girl was so shy that no one would even make an effort in talking to her. There were also days when Naruto was absent and she saw Hinata looking at the door as if she was waiting for someone and then sighing in disappointment when Aruka marked Naruto absent from the roster. The team placement had been postponed because of the surprising arrival of her father, which was seven days ago. Waiting for Aruka sensei Naruko made friends with Hinata, to which Hinata was very enthusiastic about but Naruko just assumed that it was because she never had any friend because of her shy nature. As for Hinata, she was on cloud 9 for making her first friend as no one else could stand her shy nature but also because it was her crush's sister. When Kiba entered the class he noticed Naruto, while he didn't have any problem with Naruto, but seeing he here surprised him because as far he knew Naruto didn't pass the exam. Hey Naruto, what are you doing here, didn't you fail the exam and what's with the new look, Kiba said. Kiba, I was given a secret mission by Sandame Hokage, which upon completion earned me my headband, and as for new look well I will be starting my shinobi career so I thought a change was in order, Naruto replied calmly. Secret mission, ha huh? more like Hokage giving you special treatment, Kiba sneered which made Naruto extremely angry so much so that he started leaking killer intent, but as soon as he started he reined his anger recalling his training with both Yugao and Shisui on not to show his anger and always think with clear head. Flashback Naruto was sparing with Yugo but was not able to land even a punch and it was making him angry each moment. Yugo seeing Naruto's anger called the spar to stop. Naruto, you need to calm down during the spar, even if you are losing. An angry mind is always a clouded one and can be tricked easily which makes you vulnerable to an opponent, but keeping a calm mind would help you find solution to any problem. Yugo lectured and Naruto nodded at those wise words. Flashback end. If you don't believe me Kiba, then you can ask Aruka sensei, as he was informed of the mission by the Sandame Hokage, Naruto replied. All the commotion died down as Aruka entered the class and started taking roll call, he was really sad when Naruto replied in an emotionless tone, as according to him it didn't suit him. Even if he knew about his idiot mask, the real Naruto was also a happy-go-lucky guy but ever since the revelation of his parents' abandonment of him, Naruto had adopted an emotionless mask. As Aruka thought of Naruto parents, it made his blood boil, how someone could leave their own child like that, and their blood. It was inexcusable, they didn't have a right to call themselves parents after that. After that someone asked where Mizuki was so Aruka replied in a proud tone. Mizuki was discovered as a traitor of the leaf and was caught by Genin Uzumaki Naruto. While looking at Naruto with pride and it left everyone in surprise, especially Kiba as this meant that Naruto was telling truth and on the top of that he had beaten a chunin. Okay now, team 1 will consist of, team 8 will consist of Hinata Hayuga, Shino Aburame and Kiba Inazuka. Your sensei will be Yuhi Kuranai. We are not in the same team, Hinata said in sadness to Naruko. It's okay. We just have to make sure we keep in contact, right? Naruko replied with a smile. Right? Hanada gave a small smile in return. Team 9 is still in circulation, Aruka said. I just hope I end up with Sasuke kun, but if I ended up with Naruto kun, that wouldn't be so bad either, Ino said with a faraway look. What the hell, Ino pig? Naruto baka, Sakura asked. 
The son of the Hokage who also beat up a Chunin trader, yep that's the one, Ino said with a dreamy sigh. Team 10 consists of Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi and Shika. What? Ino screamed. Geez, Ino, you don't have to scream. Troublesome. Shikamaru said lazily. There has to be a mistake, Uruka sensei Please tell me there was a mistake. These lazy good for nothing. I can't be on a team with them, Ino ranted. Gee, thanks, Shikamaru said rolling his eyes. These decisions are final, Ino. Your sensei will be Asuma Serutobi. Sensei, why did you skip Team 7? Sakura asked. Well, because of a lot of changes, Uruka replied, rubbing his head. Changes? Sakura asked, yeah, there was a lot of hot debate on this team in particular. Finally, it was decided that Team 7 will consist of Sakura Haruno. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Only Uzumaki Naruto, I have lived with that name for all my life and it will remain that way. Naruto replied calmly. Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke Uchiha. Uruka continued but was interrupted again. Yay! Sasuke kun! Eat it, pig! Sakura cheered, staring brazenly at a fuming Ino. Will you let me finish? Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Uruka finally finished. Naruko looked at Naruto with a smile but Naruto just kept staring ahead with an emotionless look on his face. Your sensei would be Kakashi Hitaki and Kashina Uzumaki, Uruka said and looked at Naruto to see his reaction but Naruto just sat there with an emotionless look. Meanwhile Naruto was seething inside at the attempt of his parents to be involved in his life but Naruto would endure, he was a shinobi so he would endure and one day become the greatest Hokage of Konoha. All the Janin arrived and took their respective teams, the only team left was Team 7. Naruto just sat there his face devoid of any expression, while Naruko kept sending his nervous glances trying to muster up the courage to talk to him. Sakura on the other hand kept trying to get Sasuke's attention while Sasuke kept ignoring him. Finally the door opened and walked in a cheerful Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze. Hey guys, I want all of you to meet me at the roof, Kashina said while receiving a smile from Naruko and Sakura. Sasuke looked at her with a calculative gaze as if deciding whether she was worth his time and would help him make him strong enough to kill him, while Naruto just looked at her with an expressionless look, she then shushin out the room. They all made their way to the roof and saw Kashina and Kakashi waiting for them. Yo! Kakashi greeted with a wave while his visible eye took U shape as if smiling. Okay, sit down everyone, today we will get to know each other, Kashina said as children sat down. We want you guys to introduce yourselves, Kakashi said. Shouldn't you guys introduce yourselves first, so we know how to? Sakura suggested and then looked at Sasuke who was looking at Naruko. Okay then I'll start, my name is Kakashi Hitaki, my likes do not concern you, my dislikes are none of your business and as for my hobbies they are classified, Kakashi said while giving an eye smile at end and received passive looks from everyone. I'll show you how it's done. My name is Kashina Uzumaki Namikaze. My likes are reading, training and all of my children. My dislikes are perverts, criminals and anyone who dare harm my babies. My dream is spending more time with my whole family, Kashina said, smiling motherly towards Naruto, but received an emotionless expression from said blonde. Okay, now it's your turn, Kakashi said, noticing Kashina deflates a bit. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. My likes are Ramen, Tuchi san, Ayame san, Uruka sensei, a certain Enbu and Sandame Hokage. My dislikes are certain people. My dream is to surpass all the previous Hokages, Naruto said in a neutral tone. Kashina looked down sadly when she heard him say that he disliked certain people. No matter how many times she went by it, she couldn't find an excuse for what she did to him and there was nothing she could say to change his mind. She wouldn't give up, though. She would work until her last breath to earn his forgiveness and having him in her team would at least allow her a start. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. My likes and dislike are none of your business in my dream. No, my goal is to kill a certain someone and revive my clan. He said the last one staring shamelessly at Naruko which didn't go unnoticed by the mother, who gave a disapproving frown. My name is Naruko Uzumaki Namikaze. My likes are Tu-san, Ka-san, Narumi-chan and Ni-san. My dislikes are Uchiha Yuru's. 
My dream is to be known as the best Kunoichi that ever lived, Naruko said. My name is Sakura Haruno. I love reading and a certain someone. I dislike Naruto and Ino. My dream is to be with certain someone and make a family together, Sakura said. Well now that we got that out of the way, I'll let you know that tomorrow you guys will be having a test to see at 6 in the morning at training ground 7, if you're ready to be real shinobi, Kakashi said and waited for someone to scream, but we already did the test. He was surprised when they all kept quiet. Will the test involve the two of you? Sakura finally asked. Well, after discussing things, Kashina Sama and I decided that I will be the only one testing you. Don't eat any breakfast or you'll throw up tomorrow, Kakashi said as he shushined out of there. Get some rest guys because you'll need it tomorrow. I'll see you at home Naruko and I would like to talk to you Naruto before you leave, Kashina said. Naruto faced Kashina while keeping any emotion off his face. Hello, Sochi, Kashina said. I am not your son Kashina Sama, Naruto said, but when Kashina was about to interrupt him, he raised his hand to let him complete. You may have given birth to me, but you didn't raise me like a parent should and left me in the hands of people you trusted but those who abandoned me within days after you left. I might have been able to forgive you for that, but you didn't even check up on me. It is very difficult even impossible to forgive you for that. With time I might be able to respect you as my sensei. So please leave me alone as I have a test to prepare tomorrow. Naruto said and left without looking back leaving a heartbroken mother to her thoughts. Kashina would not cry even as the tears gathered in her eyes. She didn't deserve to cry. She didn't deserve sympathy. She didn't deserve to be called a mother, a parent, after one of her children suffered so badly. She did deserve every word he said to her though and she knew it. It wasn't going to be easy getting her son back but Kashina refused to live a life without him. He was her son, her Sochi, and it was time she took responsibility for her idiotic and careless mistakes. Later at night, General Training Ground 1, Konoha had many training grounds, some of which were allowed only to Anbu, Junin and Hokage, while some of them were assigned to specific genin cells. The general training grounds were the one which could be used by anyone, but were mostly used by genin in reserves. If someone were to come across general training ground one they would only see destruction. Kanai and Shuriken were scattered around. Many of the trees looked like they had been torn apart by ferocious winds, while many other trees looked like they had been struck by lighting and many of them had holes in it as if high pressure water shots went through it. And in the middle of it was Naruto, on his knees. There were tears in his eyes and he was crying openly. His eternal Mangekio Sharingan active and were spinning wildly. Ever since his parents showed up he had bottled up all his emotions, but today seeing his so-called mother, he just couldn't and decided to train here to release all of his anger, hatred and resentment he felt towards his so-called family, the two Sanin who were supposed to take care of him and the village populace who tried to deny his existence. Suddenly someone engulfed him in a hug from behind, he immediately recognized the chakra signature. Why did they do this, Yugo ne san? Why? Naruto said while crying. Shish, Naruto-kun let it all out, let it all out, Yugo said as she rubbed his back in a soothing manner. They sat in that position for at least an hour, while Naruto cried and Yugo tried to calm him down. Soon Naruto calmed down and fell asleep and Yugo carried him to his apartment and tucked him into bed. Before the revelation of Yandaimi and his family being alive, Yugo had idolized Kashina Uzumaki, after all, she was the one who became her Janin sensei for her genin team alongside Kuranai Yuhi and Asuma Serutobi. It was one of the reasons why Yugo had taken the mission to guard Naruto and then later train him. But when it was revealed that not only was she alive but abandoned her son, all the respect she had towards her had turned into anger. When she was called by both Yandaimi and Kashina, after they got to know that she was the one who trained her via Sandame Sama, they thanked her while both wanting to know more about their son but all she told them was that it was a privilege to train Naruto and that they will get to know about them as he advances in his shinobi career. When both of them tried to apologize to her she told them the only person they should apologize to was Naruto, and when Kashina insisted that she accept their apology, as she knew both she and her husband had disappointed her, but all she told them was that she would accept their apology when Naruto would forgive them. All four of the new minted genin looked towards Kakashi in irritation and anger as their new sensei had called them at 7 in the morning but he himself had come two hours late. As for Kakashi he looked at the new genin which included two of his sensei's children. 
When Kakashi was recommended by the council to the Sandame he was excited to teach the Uchiha Sasuke because they both shared something that no one else in Konoha did, the Sharingan. It wasn't as if he would forget about his other students as well but he wanted to focus on grooming Sasuke into elite shinobi and use the team as support for the Uchiha's benefit. It couldn't be called favoritism if all members of the team were included now could it? Well that was all before his sensei had showed up, prompting the postponement of the placements, he told everyone of his staged death and leaving Naruto to the trust of Jiraiya, Tsunade and the village as well, who all ended up stabbing the Namikaze in the back. Minato was really disappointed in Kakashi as well, Kashina flat out disliked him now, going so far as to call Kakashi a disgrace to the shinobi code when he chose to ignore Naruto's plight. Kakashi also voiced his disagreement to that, calling Minato and Kashina hypocrites for something like that, which he can easily admit now was a huge mistake. First off Minato and Kashina didn't leave Naruto with just some random stranger, they left him with people they considered family and even though it was a terrible thing to do to a child, especially considering a child needed parent figures to grow and mature, they left Naruto with people that they thought could qualify as parental figures in Naruto's upbringing. Kakashi could see it, Naruto, grown and trained by the two legendary Sanin. That would be every child's and parent's dream and he could see why Minato and Kashina would choose not to visit until now since Naruto would be safe with Tsunade and Jiraiya teaching him their skills and techniques, grooming him to be a legendary prodigy, telling him about his parents since the S-rank secret didn't apply to them, but the two Sanin just left the kid high and dry, without a care in the world and Kakashi was only left with questions. Why did Minato and Kashina leave Naruto in the first place? Why did Jiraiya and Tsunade leave the kid as well? He already knew it couldn't be revealed to anyone of who Naruto's parents were because that would put Naruto in greater danger with people who might hate Minato taking their anger out on Naruto. So why leave him? Kakashi couldn't come up with anything. Kakashi could easily see that Sakura, Sasuke and Naruko were irritated and angry at him. He was also sure that all three of them had taken his advice and didn't eat breakfast, but when he looked at Naruto he was met with an unreadable expression not giving anything away. Okay then. I will tell you about your test so you better pay attention right now," Kakashi said gaining attention of his future students. Right now, it is about 8 in the morning, so you have 4 hours till noon," Kakashi said as he pulled out a small table clock along with three large sized bento boxes and placed them on one of the wooden tree stumps that people usually used for taijutsu or target practice. I have fixed the alarm on this clock at noon. Your job is to get these bells from me. You have till noon to get these bells from me. The person who doesn't get a bell will be tied to the stump and won't be given any lunch, any questions? Kakashi said he held up three silver bells the size of large marbles, and had a string going through loops of each of them, and tied them to the lower right corner of his flak jacket. Um sensei, there are only three bells and four of us so what happened to the person who does not get a bell? Sakura asked. That person fails anything else. Kakashi said as he looked towards his students but none of them but none of them appeared to have any questions. Ready? Kakashi said as all of them vanished from sight. Well they seem to know how to hide at least, Kakashi said as he pulled out an orange book and started reading it. With Naruto Naruto had immediately recognized the test as soon as Kakashi had taken out the bells that it was the bell test first used by Tobarama Senju on his three students and this tradition was continued by Hiruzen Serutobi who used it on the future three Sanin. While Naruto didn't want to work with any of his teammates he also knew that the only way to pass the exam was to work with his teammates, hence he sought to find his teammates. Suddenly Naruto heard a girly scream which came from his left, as he went to check it and saw Kakashi standing beside an unconscious Sakura. I didn't think I went that hard on her as I only used Megan. Narakumi no Jutsu. Kakashi said and then went off in a different direction. Seeing this Naruto decided that Sakura would only hinder him and decided to go search for someone else. As he was about to go, he saw Sasuke throw some kanai and shuriken from behind a tree which Kakashi dodged using Kawarimi no Jutsu. Seeing this Sasuke engaged Kakashi in a fierce taijutsu match in whom it seemed Sasuke was able to push Kakashi back but if a person carefully saw the match would realize that Kakashi was only playing with him. But Kakashi quickly realized that Sasuke wasn't just attacking him but trying to get close to him so that he could grab one of the bells. As Sasuke was about to grab one of the bells, Kakashi quickly jumped away. 
Well now that was close, this kid is fierce, I won't be able to read Icha Icha Paradise, Kakashi thought. Sasuke seeing that he was able to touch one of the bells filled him with confidence as such he decided to take up a notch and started doing some hand seals and cried out. Kaden. Gokaku no Jutsu. Fire style. Grand fireball technique, expelling a massive orb of roaring flame from his mouth, surprising Kakashi as most genin did not have enough chakra to do a C rank fire ninjutsu level technique. As the technique hit Kakashi, Sasuke quickly ran over to him as the flames died to get the bells, but when he reached Kakashi was nowhere to be found. Where did he go, behind me, above? Sasuke thought as he looked around for Kakashi. Beneath you, Kakashi said as he grabbed Sasuke's right leg from underground. Doden. Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Earth Style, Double Suicide Decapitation Technique. Kakashi said as he pulled Sasuke underground in a way that only his head was visible above ground. After Kakashi came out of the ground and kneeled down at Sasuke, who was glaring at him in anger at being humiliated in such a way. Well, Sasuke I will admit you have talent, but you are still not quite at my level and have a long way to go. Said Kakashi and went on his way to search for his other two students while leaving Sasuke there only. Naruto seeing this had to admit that Kakashi was a shinobi leagues above them and even he knew that he would have to not only reveal his Sharingan but also his eternal Mangekyo Sharingan which he had no plans to reveal for a long time. Naruto also observed that if he would ask Sasuke to work together, Sasuke will not agree because of his superiority complex while Sakura might agree but her current skill level would only be a hindrance to him right now. So Naruto decided to look for Naruko. He soon found Naruko hiding in a tree while observing Kakashi and from what he observed she was about to attack him. Realizing this he went over there and tapped on her shoulder. Nisan, what are you doing here? Naruko asked which made Naruto roll his eyes in annoyance at the Nisan title. First of all don't call me Nisan, Naruto said and raised his hand as she was about to protest. Second of all, I have figured out the real meaning behind this test, as this was the same test which Naidame Hokage, Toborama Senju used to test his genin team which included Sandame Hokage, Hiruzen Serutobi, who later on used the same test on his team which became the future Sanin, Naruto said and was about to continue to reveal the real meaning of this test. I remember it now, Tu San told me how his sensei Jiraiya of the Sanin used the same test on his while, which he also later on used on his team which included Kakashi sensei. Naruko interrupted but when she saw Naruto she could see sadness in his eyes as much as Naruto tried to hide it and mentally kicked herself for telling a story there too San told them as Naruto probably didn't have anyone to tell such story to him because of their abandonment of him. As for Naruto he was trying really hard to suppress his anger but most of all his sadness. He remembered how when he was younger he used to just stare at the ceiling trying to figure out something about his parents thinking who and where were his parents but decided now was not the time for those memories as he had a test to focus on. Nisan, I am, Naruko started to apologize but Naruto stopped her saying they didn't have the time as they had a test to focus on after which they told each other about some of the techniques they knew and made a plan based on that. Kakashi was seemingly reading his book but actually he was thinking which of these genin would attack him and whether any of them would be able to figure out the real meaning behind the test. Suddenly he sensed chakra on his right to where when he turned he saw many small bullets made out of air come at him at high speed, moreover he recognized this technique, as it was futon. Kuki no dongan no jutsu 1, wind style, air bullets technique. Kakashi quickly used a kawarimi no jutsu, substitution technique with a log, but as soon as he switched he saw Naruko in front of him going through hand seals. Sweden. Daitapodama, water style, great gunshot, Naruko said spitting out a giant pressurized bullet of water coming at him with great speed, seeing there was no time to substitute himself went through hand seals of his own. Doden. Doryuheki, earth style, mud wall, Kakashi cried out creating an earth wall to stop the oncoming projectile. But as soon as he stopped the water technique he sensed someone behind him and saw Naruto coming at him at high speed with two kanai in his hand which he held in a reverse grip. Kakashi was surprised by this as he recognized this taijutsu style as his sensei's the hummingbird taijutsu style. Kakashi quickly engaged Naruto in a fierce taijutsu match in which much to his surprise Naruto joined in as well using a style which he recognized as Kashina's personal taijutsu style. 
Surprisingly both of them were working in sync as if they had fought together for years and it was actually pushing Kakashi on defensive. Kakashi was inwardly very surprised and actually happy seeing that these two definitely had lots of potential and had actually figured out the real meaning behind the test. Kashina was watching all this from behind the bushes which were far enough to not disturb the test but close enough that she could see all of their performances and was actually crying tears of joy seeing both her children working in such harmony and thought to herself that this is how it should have been from the start and was cursing herself again for the mistakes that she made. She was not the only one seeing this as both Sakura and Sasuke were also seeing this from their hiding place. Sakura was clearly feeling inferior seeing Naruto and Naruko perform so admirably more so Naruto as she always saw him as an idiot and thought to herself why was he hiding his skills. Sasuke was also feeling inferior seeing Naruto and Naruko actually push Kakashi on defensive as he had quickly realized that Kakashi had only been playing with him, he was also surprised by the skills Naruto was displaying which he never saw him display but then he remembered what his knee know that man used to say, a real shinobi only displays his true skills in a life and death situation. Remembering this Sasuke balled his fist his anger and jealousy. Both Naruto and Naruko were about to go for the bells when the alarm on the clock rang, ending their test. Well, it seems time is up, you two actually put up a good fight but oh well, Kakashi said and then called out both Sakura and Sasuke out of their hiding places. He then tied Sakura to a pole when asked why he told them that she was the only one who was the most easiest to defeat. Hearing this Sakura just bowed her head, while the other three had lunches prepared to be eaten. I will be back in a minute, you will stay there Sakura and no one will feed her okay? Kakashi said receiving nods from all of them. How did they do? Kashina asked seriously as Kakashi made his way over to her. All four of them have potential, but Sakura needs to get out of her fangirl mentality while Sasuke could be considered prodigy for this generation but has a loner attitude. He chooses to fight his own battle instead of relying on his teammates for help and seeing them as nuisances instead of allies. He also has a superiority complex. Kakashi said while remembering the time when he too was like Sasuke and how much it cost him. This was one of the main reasons why he wanted to personally train Sasuke while making sure he didn't make the same mistakes that he did. What about Naruto and Naruko? Kashina further asked seeing Kakashi lose himself on memory lane. Those two are by far the best members of the squad. Both of them have a variety of skills and techniques in their arsenal. They both are very knowledgeable in taijutsu and ninjutsu, and while Naruto is faster of the two, surprisingly Naruko hits harder in comparison. Both of them were also able to figure out the real meaning of the test, that it wasn't about getting the bells but about working together. I have to commend you for teaching Naruko but I don't understand how Naruto was able to acquire the skills that he has after I read the reports of him during his time in academy. Kakashi said being suspicious in the end as he didn't know that both Yugo and Shisui had trained him. Kashina just nodded not answering the question Kakashi asked in the end as she didn't feel he was worthy of knowing, as he ignored her son's plight, she was the same way as she didn't check up on him for 12 years but she was determined to fix things at all cost with her son. How would you rate them? Kashina asked. Sakura isn't genin level but she has a bit of a promise. Sasuke would be low to mid genin level. Both Naruto and Naruko are high genin to low chunin level, Kakashi said. You do realize, I would have to fail them as they didn't realize the real meaning of the test, Kakashi said and moved to fail them when Kashina put a hand on his shoulder stopping him from doing so. Not yet, give them time, Kashina said, but Kashina sama. Kakashi tried to speak when Kashina interrupted him again. I said give them time and I mean it Hitaki. Well then, let's watch the kids, Kakashi finally said. Yeah let's, Kashina replied with team 7 three members of the team were just staring at the lunch given to them while Sakura watched them with envy, as due to her dieting she had skipped dinner while skipping breakfast due to what Kakashi had said. Suddenly Naruto put his lunch in front of her while he moved to cut her ropes with a kanai. Why are you doing this Naruto? You could be punished by Kakashi sensei for this, Sakura said. We need all of the members of this team in full strength as the test is not about getting the bells but about teamwork. We cannot defeat Kakashi sensei alone, but together we have a fighting chance, as you both would have seen how I and Naruko did, Naruto said as he moved to cut the ropes but was interrupted by a scoff from Sasuke. I don't need anyone's help. I will take the bells from Kakashi on my own, Sasuke said. Like on your first attempt, 
At least Ni San and I were able to make Kakashi take us seriously, Teme, Naruko countered. I don't care whether you believe me or not, but this test is about teamwork, Naruto said. I believe you, Ni San, Naruko said, giving him a smile. I believe it too, Sasuke said suddenly, but he really didn't. He was only saying that because he wanted Naruko and would not stop until he got here. She was the only girl that he ever met who were both powerful and beautiful. I believe you too, Sakura added, but only because Sasuke said so. Okay then, you can have my food, Sakura, Naruto said, and as she was about to interrupt him, Don't worry about me, I will just have one of the food pills I carry, Naruto finished. No, Nisan, we all have plenty of food which we can share, Naruko said while Sasuke just nodded. With Kashina and Kakashi, well, I will be, your son is really something, Kashina sama, Kakashi said. Yes, he is, Kashina said with tears of regret in her eyes. Well might as well give them the good news, Kakashi said and schooled his face into mock anger. As all four of them were about to start Kakashi suddenly appeared out of nowhere with lighting flashing in the background making all of them really scared. You pass, Kakashi said, resulting in all of them face faulting, when they all composed themselves Kakashi further added. In the shinobi world, those who break the rules are called trash and that is true but those who abandon their comrades are even worse than trash, Kakashi said. And thus started the journey of Team 7 The Council of Konoha consisted of the three shinobi elders Yutatane Kaharu, Maitokato Homura and Shimura Danzo who also used to head the root Anbu before the Sandame Hokage. Hiruzen Serutobi ordered it to be disbanded after the Uchiha massacre. The council also consisted of various clan heads representing their respective clans, while some of the wealthy and prominent civilians were also members of the Konoha Council. The Konoha Council was created by the Naidame Hokage, Toborama Senju. The idea behind it was to keep a check on the power of the Hokage while giving the various different factions in Konoha a voice in the governance of the Konoha. While the council didn't have any authoritative power, they were there to make sure that all the decisions of Hokage were in the best interest of Konoha. The council could only get authoritative power during war and that too at the discretion of the Hokage. During the Third Shinobi World War the Sandame gave the council some authoritative power to deal with the day-to-day -day dealings of the village as he was busy with the war. But after the war was over the Sandame took the power back before giving the hat to Minato Namikaze. Many members of the council did not like it as they had gotten used to the power. So during the aftermath of the Kyubi attack when the Yandaimi faked his death, the council quickly passed some laws that gave them back the power they had during the war as the Sandame was busy dealing with the aftermath. Minato knew the only way to take back the power and disband the civilian council was with the help of the fire daimyo but even then the feudal lord of fire country would need a valid reason and concrete proof to support the disbandment of the civilian council and the various other changes he wanted to implement. So for the last few days Minato with the help of the Anbu agents has been investigating the different dealings of the council and the finding made him see red. Decreasing the funding of the academy and redirecting it to their own pockets, pilfering funds from the village treasury to their own pockets in the name of different projects that have not shown any progress in years. When Minato asked the Sandame about it, he said that the civilian council was working with the shinobi elders to dodge investigation while the Sandame had to protect Naruto from Danzo. Minato also asked Hiruzen that why didn't he contact him and Kashina after both Jiraiya and Tsunade had abandoned Naruto to which the former Sandame replied that the other shinobi villages were closely monitoring Konoha for any weakness and that any message sent by him could be intercepted by them, there was also the possibility of Danzo and his allies intercepting the message which they would use as an advantage to make his son their weapon. Minato also found out that all of the clan heads ignored his son's plight when they claimed to be his and Kashina's friends before they faked their deaths. Kashina was also demanding him to do something about the council and he was more than happy to oblige. As all of the members of council came and took their seats all of them noticed the serious expression on Minato's face. Welcome council members, Minato greeted. Why have you called this meeting, Minato? Kaharu Yutatane asked. You will address me as Hokage sama Elder San, and that goes for all of the council members, Minato said in a cold tone, sending a shiver down everyone's spine. This was different from the Minato they all knew. May I ask what this meeting has been called for Hokage sama? Shikaku asked. I am glad you asked Shikaku, from today onwards there will be a lot of changes in the governance of Konoha, Minato said. 
Like what? Shoza asked. As of this moment the civilian council has been disbanded, Minato said. There was uproar by the members of the civilian council which was to be expected but the shinobi elders also voiced their disagreement. It all stopped when Minato released his key silencing everyone. An investigation was carried on by me and I found out that there were many discrepancies in the accounts of the Konoha treasury. After discussing this with the fire daimyo it has been decided that the civilian council will be disbanded and all of them were to be arrested for interrogation to fully comprehend the limit of the corruption. If found guilty all of their assets will be seized and they will be sent to prison according to the severity of their crime, Minato said and as soon as he finished Anbu showed up and arrested the civilian council members despite their vocal protest. After the civilian council members were taken by the Anbu Minato turned his attention towards the rest of the members of the council. There will be an independent audit of accounts of all of the members of the council and various clans of Konoha to see if there is any corruption. Minato continued but was interrupted by the protest of shinobi elders and the clan heads. Minato again released his key to silence them up. It is by the order of fire daimyo, also until the audits are complete all of the council is disbanded, Minato finished. You can't do this Hokage-sama, the village needs a council in order to function properly and we all need to vote on the matters relating to village matters, Kaharu said. You are wrong there Kaharu-san, this village is a dictatorship, my word is law unless stated otherwise by the daimyo. You all are only here to advise me and help me make decisions in the best interest of the village, but seeing the result of the initial investigation it is clear that this council is incapable of its assigned job. Minato finished and asked all of the council members to leave. The various clan heads who once called Minato their friend had tried to apologize to him but were just met with cold indifference and knew that it would be long time before he forgave any of them. Danzo while leaving looked at Minato and knew this audit would weaken his root forces as he needed the money to maintain them. He would have to contact Orochimaru and see that his plans to invade Konoha were not compromised so that he could use the chaos to bring about his vision of Konoha. After the council meeting Minato sat in his office and immediately called his best tracking Anbu team. I want you to track down Jiraiya and bring him back to Konoha. Tell him that this is an order from the Hokage and cannot be ignored but do not tell him that I am back, Minato ordered. The Anbu team immediately vanished to carry out their orders. As Minato sat there he thought of how everything had spiraled out of control and just because of one decision. At that time the same decision seemed to make so much sense. He and Kashina training Naruko while Naruto would have been trained by the two Sanin. But both of the Sanin betrayed him and his family leaving his son in a village that hated him for what he contained. Minato never hated anyone more than the Sanin but knew he too was at fault for not checking upon Naruto and blindingly trusting the Sanin and now because of this his son hated him and Kashina while not even interacting with his sisters. Sisters who were so excited to meet their elder brother once he told them about him. He read the report given to him by Kakashi of the performance of his team in the bell test and was proud of Naruto. He was especially surprised when Kakashi reported that Naruto was using his own personal taijutsu style but he was also sad that he was not the one who taught him. He also wanted to know whether Naruto had unlocked Sharingan or not. Many didn't know the fact that after Uchiha Madara defected from Konoha, the Uchiha clan elders had evicted a family from the clan due to the fact that none of the members of that family had ever unlocked their bloodline limit the Sharingan but also due to the fact that they had adopted a daughter, while it was common for couples who didn't have any children to adopt but it was heavily frowned upon in shinobi clans especially those that had a unique bloodline. Unknown to the elders and even the family and the girl herself that the girl they had adopted was actually the daughter of Madara but was put in an orphanage by Hashirama to protect her after Madara abandoned Konoha. The family then went on to do well as successful merchants taking up the name of Namikaze, while their only child joined the ninja force and became the first Anbu vice commander under the leadership of Naidame Hokage Toborama Senju. When she revealed the fact that he was an Uchiha whose family was evicted from the clan to Toborama, the Naidame helped her master her Sharingan to a level only seen in Madara and his brother having studied the Sharingan himself while also telling her not to rely on the Sharingan and to only see her bloodline as a tool. When Minato became a genin, he got to know about all this from the Sandame who was told by the Naidame seeing all of the Namikaze family was dead as his father had died during a mission while his mother perished giving birth to him as there were some complications, hence Minato was given to orphanage to protect him from the enemies of the Namikaze who would try to harm him either to get revenge on his father or to rob him of his family fortune. 
While looking at the decision made by the Sandame, he came upon the case of one Yakumo Kuruma who had her abilities sealed by the Sandame. As he read the report he got to know that it was done due to Ido residing in her subconscious a side effect due to inheriting her clan's Keke Jenke in its full, but the Sandame didn't have enough Fuinjutsu skills to completely seal away Ido and Jiraiya not answering any of the Sandame's messages left the aged leader no option but to do the best he could, deciding to talk to the current head of Kuruma clan later he continued to look through the reports. Few days later, afternoon, Team 7 was gathered in training ground 7 waiting for Kakashi as he was late again. Suddenly Naruto looked towards his right, a few seconds later Kakashi appeared in a swirl of leaves, a fact which didn't go unnoticed by Kashina making her realize that Naruto might be a sensor type shinobi. Sensei, you're late. Sakura screamed. Sorry I am late, you see a black cat crossed my path and I had to take the long way round. Kakashi said giving them an eye smile but saw Kashina glaring at him telling him to cut his crap, she still hasn't forgiven him for what had befallen Naruto. They had been doing D-Rank's missions for quite the last few days, it was decided by their senseis so they could see how well the team could work together and while they would perform missions effectively, it was the interactions after the mission was over that worried them. Sakura would just try to gain Sasuke's attention while Sasuke would just ignore her, while in the past when that happened Naruto would ask her out and Sakura would refuse him by punching him. It was in the past and now Naruto would also just ignore her making Sakura's self-confidence take a hit. Sometimes Sasuke would try to ask Naruko out on a date but she would always refuse him but it didn't deter the Uchiha in the slightest from trying to make a move on Naruko. Sasuke would also try to get Naruto spar with him after seeing him perform so well during the bell test made him realize that Naruto was hiding his original skills the whole time and that he was probably more stronger than himself. Sasuke also realized that Naruto was a true genius like that man, while many in Konoha would tell Sasuke that he was a true prodigy, he knew deep down that he wasn't as talented as that man is, and seeing Naruto show the same kind of potential as his knee know that man, Sasuke finally found a way to kill him because if he could find a way to beat one true genius then he would be able to defeat another. Naruko at first tried to interact with all of her teammates having learned from her parents how important it was. But Sasuke was just interested in asking her out and eventually make her his wife something that wouldn't happen if she has any say about it. Sakura would just accuse her of trying to steal her Sasuke kun, and then run to try and get his attention. The hardest she tried to interact with was Naruto because Naruto always excused himself before leaving after the mission was over. She really wanted to know her elder twin from the moment she got to know about him when she was 7 years old. She remembered how for her 8th birthday she asked that she wanted to celebrate it with her whole family but her father would usually say that the time wasn't right and that they would one day, and look how well it turned out for them, her brother didn't want to do anything with any of them and it was all because her parents blindly trusted someone to take care of Naruto and didn't even thought of checking up on him on their own. But that stopped 2 days ago. Flashback starts. 2 days ago, Naruto was just about to go home after the mission was over but Naruko caught up him. Nisan. Wait up, Naruko said. Naruko san, what is it? Naruto said as he had given up on trying to get Naruko to not call him Nisan. I just wanted to talk to you, since we are in the same team, I thought we should become friends and know more about each other. Naruko said in a hopeful voice. Naruto closed his eyes for a moment, thinking, then opened them and replied. Very well, so what do you suggest we do? Naruto said, while Naruko was shocked that he actually accepted. Quickly recovering from her shock, she replied. We can go for lunch together, Naruko said while Naruto just nodded and followed her while contemplating whether he had made the right choice or not. Flashback end after that, both Naruto and Naruko spent lunch together every day after their mission was over, and while they were not as close as siblings could be, they were making progress. As for Naruto, he kept professional relations with everyone on his team, including both of his sensei, but that had begun to change as he was now interacting more with Naruko. The reason for that because of an advice given to him by Ayame who works as a waitress at her father's restaurant, Ramen Ichiraku, but is considered as an older sister by Naruto. Flashback starts. Three days ago, Naruto had just finished another D rank mission, or as he preferred to call them chores that the civilians are too lazy to do. He was getting irritated by one, constant pestering of Naruko wanting to talk to him and form the bond which according to her is necessary for a genin team to function properly and two by the constant demand of Uchiha Sasuke to fight him, he didn't want to fight someone he could beat easily, 
he wanted to fight people who would help him get stronger and unleash his full potential. He had two clear goals in his life. One was to become the Hokage of the Leaf as it was the highest position anyone could gain in Konoha and second was to surpass both Uchiha Madara and Senju Hashirama. While many would only see Madara as a traitor for Naruto both of the legendary shinobi were goals he wanted to surpass as no one since the establishment of the shinobi village system had surpassed them. Today he decided to eat at a restaurant he hadn't been able to visit in all of the mayhem. Ayame ne chan. Naruto exclaimed as he entered Ichiraku ramen and saw Ayame there. Naruto kun. How are you? And why didn't you visit for so many days? Ayame asked in a concerned voice as she knew all of the crap he had to face for the last few days and was angry at Naruto's so called family who just abandoned their son after sealing Kayubi into him in a village that tried its best to deny him his existence. I am fine, Nei chan, just didn't have the time to visit, now that I am a shinobi? Naruto replied in a fake happy voice, but Ayame was able to see through it. I know you are not fine, Naruto kun, but please do not let anything change you, Ayame said. When Naruto looked at her with confused eyes she elaborated. The Naruto I know never gives up, the Naruto I know only strives to help anyone he can, but the most important thing is even after the village tried its best to deny your existence you didn't held any hatred towards them, you just strive to achieve your goals so please don't change. Also you should at least give a chance to your sisters as they didn't had any control over what happened to you, Naruto-kun, please think about what I said. Ayame said and then left to bring him his usual order while leaving him to his thoughts. Flashback and Naruto had given it a real thought and come to the conclusion that Ayame had been right, his sisters didn't have any say in what happened to him but this didn't mean he would become all chummy with them so he decided he would at least be cordial with Naruko and if opportunity presented Narumi, because if he was being honest with himself Narumi was the cutest little girl he had ever seen. Since all the members of Team 7 were now here Kashina decided to tell the kids their plan for training. Today, we will be starting your training on different things which are essential for a shinobi. We will be dividing you into two groups, one will be taught by Kakashi and the other would be taught by me, Kashina said. Okay then, first group would be of Sakura and Sasuke who would be taught by me while the second group would compose of Naruto and Naruko who would be taught by Kashina-sama, Kakashi finished. While Kakashi would have preferred to train Sasuke alone, Kashina was having none of that. Sakura still needed a lot of work and Kashina made it perfectly clear to train the girl so she could match her teammates in skills and power, the latter if possible. With that both the groups separated and went in different directions. With Kakashi's group, I will be teaching you the tree climbing exercise, Kakashi said giving an eye smile to both his students only to receive disbelieving looks from them. Tree climbing? Both Sasuke and Sakura shouted unable to hide their disbelief. But it's not just simple tree climbing, you will climb without using your hands, Kakashi said. What? How? Sakura asked the disbelieving look still on her face while Sasuke had already adopted a mask of indifference on his face but he was also curious. Well, just watch, Kakashi said as he formed a ram seal and focused his chakra on his feet and started walking a nearby tree. When he reached the tree he surprised them by climbing perpendicular to the tree only with his feet. Kakashi just continued to climb the tree until he reached a branch and then walked on the branch until he was standing upside down from the branch. So see, kind of like this. Focus the chakra on the bottom of your feet and make them stick to the tree trunk. If you use chakra well, you can do things like this. The aim of this training is to accumulate the required amount of chakra to the required spot which is surprisingly difficult even for an expert shinobi. The amount of chakra used for tree climbing is very subtle and the bottom of the feet is the most difficult place to gather chakra. Anyway, in other words, if you master that control, it will be possible to master any jutsu which is not exclusive to a particular bloodline limit. In theory that is. The next aim is to maintain that combined chakra. Shinobi combine the most chakra during battles. Under such situations, control, and maintenance of chakra becomes most difficult but nothing will happen if i just kept on explaining it you'll need to learn it with your bodies kakashi explained then through two kanai in front of sasuke and sakura use that kanai to put a mark at the spot where you can climb up to under your own strength now next make an effort to put a mark further from it you aren't good enough to walk up from the start so run and use your momentum to get used to it you got it 
Kakashi instructed as he went to sit under the same tree he had climbed, while both Sasuke and Sakura focused their chakra on their feet. At first when Sasuke ran towards the tree, he was able to climb nine steps but was blasted of tree trunk as he tried to take the tenth step. After analyzing the situation when the opposite happened in his next turn on his eleventh step he was able to conclude two things. First maintaining constant flow of chakra was more difficult than he thought and second that if the chakra is too strong you get pushed back but if the chakra is too weak, there is no sticking power and the person falls of the tree. This seems pretty easy. Sakura said as Sasuke looked up to see her sighting on one of the higher branches of the tree. It seems Sakura has more control than you Sasuke and the Uchiha clan is not that great as it seems, Kakashi said. Shut up sensei. Sakura shouted now Sasuke-kun won't like me, she thought. While Kakashi himself was observing Sasuke as he saw his angry yet determined look. Show me your true potential Sasuke, Kakashi thought. With Kashina's group, I will begin your training in some time but first I want the both of you to spar so that I can see your strengths and weaknesses and work on them accordingly, Kashina said, but in reality the one whose strengths and weaknesses she wanted to see was Naruto as she already knew Naruto's being one of two who trained her from the age of six, so that she could help both her children achieve their full potential. Seeing both of them nod she continued. Now this will be a no bar spar, meaning there are no restriction on the usage of ninjutsu, genjutsu, taijutsu, fuinjutsu or any of the other shinobi arts but killing blows are not allowed. I will act as the proctor of this spar. Both Naruto and Naruko came forward and did the seal of confrontation, after which they both distanced themselves from one another. As soon as Kashina started the match, Naruko sped towards Naruto towards Naruto while Naruto himself entered the initial stance of the hummingbird taijutsu style, and both of them engaged in a taijutsu competition. While the Uzumaki taijutsu style which Naruko had learnt is based on attacking and overpowering an opponent with sheer strength. The hummingbird taijutsu style Naruto learnt is based on speed and joint manipulation which basically means that it allows you to deliver varying degrees of pain to an opponent and in cases even heavily injure them by targeting the spots where bones connect which allows humans to move or bend. At first glance it would seem that neither of them was gaining any grounds but Kashina was able to see that Naruto was able to dodge most of Naruko's attacks due to him being faster than her and was also able to attack her in the short moments but it was taking its toll on him too as the hits that Naruko did get were powerful enough to compensate for the ones she missed. Seeing that Taijutsu was useless Naruto flipped back, flashing through hand seals and ending at bird. Futon. Kuki no Dongan no Jutsu, wind style. Air bullets technique, Naruto said as he expelled air bullets out of his mouth at an intense speed. Naruko seeing there was no time to dodge flashed through her own hand signs and ending a dog. Doden. Doryuheki, earth style. Mud wall, said Naruko slamming her hands on the ground to create an earth wall, using the same jutsu Kakashi used to stop the oncoming air projectiles. But as soon as she thought she was safe she sensed someone behind her. Turning around she saw Naruto throw five kanai towards her but the difference between regular kanai and these were that they were coated with wind chakra. Naruko channeling chakra through her feet quickly jumped dodging the kanai to stand on the earth wall she created but as soon as she did she saw Naruto once again coming at her with one kanai in each hand held in classic reverse grip, quickly doing a back flip, she jumped off the wall while throwing some of her own kanai at Naruto to distract him and gain her footing. Fortunately for Naruko her trick worked as Naruto was forced to deflect them with the two kanai held in his hand which gave Naruko just the time to catch her breath, Naruko seeing that ninjutsu wasn't working decided to use her secret ace, summoning her adamantine sealing chains, she launched them at Naruto. As soon as Naruto was done dealing with the kanai he saw chakra chains which surprised him as he thought only Kashina had that ability but he was able to overcome his surprise quickly enough to dodge them just barely but Naruko was relentless as she kept her assault. Naruto knew he wouldn't be able to dodge them for long without using his ace. So he channeled chakra to his eyes as they bleed red and turned into the three Tomo Sharingan this time surprising Naruko but she didn't stop her assault and quickly overcame her surprise, with this he was able to keep track of her chains and dodge them, but this was not all he was doing, he was also casting a subtle genjutsu on Naruko which disrupts them senses just enough that would affect her actions but she will not notice them. His strategy worked as Naruko was not as accurate as before making it easier for him to dodge but he wasn't able to bypass them to deliver the defeating blow. Enough. 
Kashina said seeing the spar had become a stalemate. She was also surprised by seeing that Naruto had not only unlocked his Sharingan eyes but had evolved them to their free Tomo stage and gained such mastery to cast subtle genjutsu with his eyes and tried to guess who could have helped him, but came up with a blank. Both Naruto and Naruko stopped with Naruko dispelling her chakra chains and Naruto switching off his Sharingan. Both of you did very well but I have some points which would help you grow even stronger. Naruko first you need to increase your speed since if you are not able to hit your opponent it doesn't matter how strong you are. Also you need to practice your skills in detecting genjutsu especially the subtle ones, as Naruto was able to put you under a genjutsu with his eyes that messed with your senses. I hope you will help Naruko with that Naruto, Kashina said as she looked hopefully towards Naruto only to receive a nod. Kashina saddens a little bit at the lack of response but continues. Naruto you need to work on your strength, while your speed is better than most of the genins, you might meet a shinobi who is on par with your speed or even faster than you so you just can't rely on just your speed to bail you out. I wasn't able to find anything else from this spar but I will help you improve as our team progresses, Kashina said with a smile. Naruto just nodded not trusting his voice less he lashed out at her. Very well, Naruko you head home, I will join you in a while, Kashina said. Okay. Goodbye Nisan. Naruko said waving a goodbye towards Naruto, while Naruto just acknowledged her with a nod. You mean so much to her you know, she envies you greatly, Kashina said as she watched Naruko leave. Why would she envy me? We are about the same level in shinobi skills and with time she might even become stronger than me if I ever slack off, Naruto said in a monotonous voice but there was a hint of curiosity in his voice. She told me that you are stronger than her mentally. She told me that if she had the same upbringing as you then she would have snapped a long time ago. She envies you an inner strength. You are her role model, even before she met you, Kashina said. She doesn't know what I've been through, Naruto said. True, but she can guess, and looks up to you for your inner strength, Kashina said. He was surprised by that statement but it also reminded of him of his past which made him frown. I never asked for a harsh life. Naruto said looking away from Kashina which made her flinch. I know Naruto-kun and I can't even begin to tell you how sorry I am, Kashina said regretfully. It doesn't matter how many times you apologize, it doesn't change what I've been through, what I've been through. During my childhood, I had no one to play with as no one would become my friend. When I came home there was no one to greet me or to ask me how my day went. When I joined the academy, I thought I could make friends but no one would even talk to me and when I performed good, my chunin instructors almost succeeded in attacking me if it wasn't for my anbu guards. That was the reason I was forced to play the fool during the academy, you left me in a village where most of the civilians hated me, and the shinobi either hated or ignored me. You left me to rot, Naruto shouted the last part. All the anger he had been keeping inside himself just burst forth as he reached his limit. Kashina was trying her best not to break down at this point, but to hear such things from her own son, was making her heart break but she kept her tears at bay. I know Naruto, but we did not leave you alone. We left you in the care of your godparents, but we didn't think they would betray us like they did, Kashina said in an almost broken voice. That is all. You left me in the care of other people and then what, you forgot about me. You could have taken me with you wherever you went. You sent me no letters. Nothing to tell me that you were alive, nothing to prove to me that my parents were there. Hell, I only got to know about your existence and the fact that you were my parents was on the day you returned, and then you had the gall to expect a loving son who dreamed of meeting his parents one day. No chance in hell, Naruto said, his voice filled with anger and betrayal. Kashina paused when she registered something Naruto said, and her eyes widened. Why didn't she remember it before? But we did send you letters and presents every month for the last 12 years. Kashina said thoroughly confused. I never received anything. Did they just vanish in thin air? Naruto asked. His tone went back to being emotionless. Before Kashina could interrupt he continued. It has been a long day Kashina sensei. I would like to go to my apartment and retire for the day. Have a nice day. Naruto said in a blank tone as he bowed and took his leave. Leaving Kashina thoroughly confused and sad. As Kashina thought about where did the letters and presents went. Suddenly everything clicked in her mind as she remembered how they were sent. Minato and she sent these letters and presents using the toad so that they could directly be sent to Jiraiya so that he could give them to Naruto. 
But seeing neither Jiraiya nor Tsunade took care of him, he wouldn't have received any of them. This just gave the mother another reason to slowly torture Jiraiya and Tsunade, especially Jiraiya as she went towards Namikaze estates but decided against it and decided to take a walk to clear her head. Minato was in his bedroom, which was in the Namikaze estate, waiting for his wife to come home. Naruko had told him that Kashina said that she wanted to talk to Naruto and would come back later, but he didn't want to sleep until he saw her. He knew he couldn't see Naruto yet, the boy had enough problems trying to adjust to his mother and he would only complicate things further. He knew he was acting like a coward but he was focusing more on the logical aspect of the situation instead of just manning up. Were you waiting for me to come home Minato-kun? He was so out of it that he actually jerked in surprise and saw Kashina, who was already in her nightgown. Yeah, he 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 sorry, Minato said sheepishly. Sai it's okay, I was actually hoping that you would be awake when I came home, Kashina said honestly. How did the day go? Minato asked. It went quite well, both Naruto and Naruko did quite well, I had them spar. Naruko actually had to summon her chakra chains but Naruto was able to counter them effectively, in fact if I hadn't stopped the spar, I am pretty sure Naruto would have won. He already has a fully matured Sharingan and from what I saw, he has such mastery over it that he was able to put Naruko in a subtle genjutsu which targeted her senses in such a way that she wasn't even able to detect it, Kashina said. Are you serious? Minato asked in a voice full of shock, having a fully matured was a feed onto itself but to be able to put someone in such a genjutsu, even with Sharingan took some serious skills. I'm completely serious, you should have seen him today, so strong and so determined. He may not like me but you can never stop a mother from being so proud. Kami Minato I love him so much that it hurts, knowing that I made so many mistakes and that he had to suffer for it. It's so painful to look at him and know that I can never hold him in my arms, knowing that he will never call me Ka-san. Kashina choked out as she sobbed. All those emotion coming to the surface and the mother couldn't hide them. Kashina-chan, we were both responsible so don't be too hard on yourself. We will get through this, we'll get our son back. We will sort out this dreadful village for what they put him through. I may be Hokage but after what they did to Naruto I refuse to put these people first, only my family deserves such, especially Naruto, Minato said as he wiped away his wife's tears. When will you teach him the Rasengan? Kashina asked. When the time is right, Minato said careful. When will you go to him? Kashina asked with a frown. When the two of you have sorted things out first, Minato said. But Min, I know what you're going to say, that I shouldn't wait, but hear me out first. You're his mother, you cared for him so much and it was my idea to trust Jiraiya and Tsunade in the first place. It was my decision to separate from him and that wasn't fair to you or the children. You deserve this, to make a connection with him, to be there for him and I would only disrupt the bonding by being involved, Minato said sadly. Minato-kun. Stop talking crap, Kashina said to the surprised Hokage. We were both involved in the decision to leave him here, you're not the only one to blame for that and you shouldn't distance yourself just because you think you'd be doing us a favor. Naruto needs both of us, not just me. He needs to know that we're there for him no matter what. Even if he despises us, we need to show him that we love him to no end, Kashina said. Yeah, I guess so, but not yet. I still have a lot to sort out in this village, Minato said with irritation at the thought of Konoha. Okay. I discovered something important today, Kashina said. What? Minato asked. Naruto had never received anything from us, not even a letter, Kashina said. How is that possible? Jiraiya told us, Jiraiya was never here when we left remember, all of his letters on Naruto's upbringing was a lie, Kashina said. Right, I forgot about that. No wonder Naruto's mad at us, after not getting any word from us until we came back here, that's just so horrible. We were so careless, Minato said looking down. Find him, find both of them, Kashina said seriously. What? Minato asked confusedly. Jiraiya and Tsunade, find them immediately. I can't stand this anymore, those two have a lot to answer for before I kill them, Kashina said with a scowl. Try not to kill them too quickly, Minato said. No promises, Kashina said seriously. Naruko eyes shot wide open as she landed with a slight splash and a dull thud. The feeling of falling was for eternity still fresh in her mind. As she looked around she found herself in some kind of narrow passage of some sort of sewer. Suddenly she heard a rumbling sound, which sounded like a distant earthquake, 
stopping for a few seconds and then starting again. She didn't know what to make of the situation but her curiosity got better of herself and she followed the sound to find out where it was coming from. As she started getting closer, her instincts flared, as if warning her to not go ahead. She saw that the narrow passage was beginning to spread out and as she approached, she could see the faint outline of a room, that made her curiosity into wary but she continued nonetheless. As she made it into the room, she could see a cage, a very large cage, when she looked up she saw no ceiling. Her head whipped in the direction of the cage, as it seemed to be the source of the rumbling. The rumbling was very loud now and it shook the entire room, albeit only slightly. Just as suddenly the rumbling stopped and she froze in place, if she didn't know any better she could have sworn that the rumbling was actually someone, or something, breathing. Something was in there, she wasn't certain but her instincts were telling her otherwise. Something was in there and she was sure it was aware of her presence as well. M. She shivered at the sound, something was definitely in there. Whatever it was seemed silent, as if assessing her in some way, her fears increasing tenfold, but what happened next threw her into complete bewilderment, your father is a fool. She shot out of her bed, her breath in short bursts, gasping for air, eyes wide open on the prospect that if she dared to even close then that would mean the end of her. She took in her surroundings quickly and her tense body relaxed when she noticed that she was in her room. What was that? Naruko whispered to herself in wary and fear. That was the most vivid dream she had ever experienced, so much detail and she was completely aware of everything around her. That had never happened to her before and she was actually scared. Calm down, it was just a dream. She scolded herself for getting so emotional, it wasn't as if that dream could harm her, it wasn't real, right? Next day both Minato and Kashina were in his office as they had been informed by an ANBU that the team sent to retrieve Jiraiya had sent a message that they would be in Konoha in two to three hours. Kashina had been leaking key ever since they had arrived in his office. Kashina-chan, I know you are furious, I am too, but we should at least hear him out before anything okay. Minato said carefully snapping Kashina out her days effectively stopping her key which was leaking. Let me make one thing clear Minato-kun, it doesn't matter what excuse he gives us, he will still get the beating of his life but I'll hear him out before I tear him apart, Kashina replied mirthlessly. That's good enough for me, Minato said. For a moment I thought you would try to put your former sensei in a good light, Kashina said, raising an eyebrow in a questioning manner. My true family comes first. It is my duty as a father and a husband to put my family first, Minato said seriously. And here I actually thought you'd put your duty as the Hokage first, Kashina replied with a small smile. Minato scoffed she had to be joking put these people before his own family these despicable villagers minato did not find that thought amusing whatsoever i just wonder how long we have to wait for your anbu kashina said in annoyance she was not a patient woman and she wanted justice now minato was about to reply but he was stopped by a poof of smoke he and kashina both looked to the figure crouched in front of them hokage sama we have arrived as estimated from our retrieval mission of jiraiya of the Sanin. The Anbu bowed lower in loyalty and respect. Where is he? Kashina immediately asked. He is in the waiting room, along with my subordinates. The agent knew not to mess with a woman scorned, and he did not want to end up in the crossfire of an angry mother. All right, send him in. Jiraiya was in a bit of a situation. One moment he was utilizing information on a possible uprising, in another village, when suddenly he was surrounded by Konoha Anbu. Now that in itself was nothing to be alarmed of since they were his allies, but when they told him that, as per the Hokage's request, he needed to return to Konoha, effective immediately, that's when he felt something was wrong. He had tried to pry information out of his escorts, but they denied him anything other than, all will be explained by the Hokage himself, nothing more was said. He had wondered what on earth Serutobi would need him for, especially using his best tracking Enbu agents to locate him. It was frustrating. He was on a mission and he didn't need Serutobi interfering. Oh well, he was back in Konoha now, not that he cared that much, but he did want to get this meeting over and done with as soon as possible. He would have easily went into Serutobi's office uninvited, like he always did, but these agents weren't giving him space to do so, in fact they were very adamant in making sure he didn't move an inch. Jiraiya-sama, the Hokage will see you now, the secretary said respectfully. She was lucky that Minato had let her keep this job. Thanks, I wouldn't mind getting together later, 
Jiraiya said with a flirtatious grin. Uh. Please make haste Jiraiya-sama. The secretary knew all about Jiraiya's tendencies and she wasn't in the least interested. Sure, sure. Jiraiya waved it off, maybe he'll stop for some research before he left the village again. He couldn't help the nagging feeling of impending doom coming forth, even though he knew full well that he wasn't in any possible danger here, who would be stupid enough to attack on of the three legendary Sanin? He approached the Hokage's office and alarm bells were starting to go off. What the hell was wrong with him? Did he eat some bad sushi or something? He decided to ignore his on and off instincts and made his way into the Hokage's office. Sarutobi, what is the meanie? He cut off his rant when he realized that it wasn't Sarutobi sitting at the usual desk, but Minato. Ah, Sensei, I hope your trip back to Konoha was a peaceful one, Minato said in false happiness. Jiraiya was truly shocked to the core. Minato was back in Konoha? Since when? Had it been twelve years already? His brain struggled to think of any coherent thoughts. Well, I apologize for inviting you here so suddenly. I just needed your report in Naruto's progress. Can he perform the Rasengan? Did you teach him any useful jutsu? Is he the prodigy that you always boasted about before his birth? Take your time sensei. The statement was gentle, but the air was thick with tension, hardly breathable. Jiraiya's mind was still trying to sort itself out. The fact that Minato was here was a surprise, but the more pressing matter would be the fact that he immediately wanted his opinion on Naruto's progress as a shinobi. He had to be honest with himself, he had no idea how to answer the onslaught of questions. He remembered that faithful day. Tsunade had left suddenly, so suddenly that he couldn't find a reason to the sudden departure, it could have been because Konoha reminded her of Dan, but if that was the case then she would have left years prior to the Kyubi attack. So he was left with the baby, and to be honest he couldn't be there all the time for the child, he had a spy network to run. He looked after Naruto, secretly of course, for only a week before giving him to an orphanage and putting the child's responsibility into the Hokage's hands. He figured it would be good for the child in the end. Minato had grown up in an orphanage, going into the academy, and then finally came to be his student. He turned out to be one of the greatest Hokages that had ever lived. He figured if Naruto had the same upbringing, then he would turn out just like his father. He had planned to come and teach the kid when he reached 12 years of age, but due to his spy network he had forgotten about it and only now did he realize that he had to know information on Naruto since he wrote it in the letters. He whirled around when he heard the door close and saw Kashina herself, looking at him with a small smile, which was anything but welcoming. Hello Jiraiya, so how has our son been doing? With all the letters you sent us then I'm sure you and Tsunade made him a great prodigy, Kashina said evenly, but her body shook only slightly. Jiraiya felt like a fish out of water, struggling to breathe and get his bearings. He knew he was in dangerous territory, so he decided to pry for information first before he would answer their questions. Hey Kashina, Minato, when did you guys get back? He had to put up a smile to try and defuse the tension, but it seemed to only fuel the sense of dread. Hum, we arrived not long ago. We wanted to see you, but you weren't here. So I deduced that you were somewhere involved in your spy network. Luckily my Anbu found you easily, Minato said evenly. He wasn't going to give too much information yet. So why weren't you with Naruto? Kashina asked. Jiraiya was starting to sweat. This was definitely not a warm welcome. I was busy with the spy network Kashina-chan, Jiraiya said carefully. Oh, how were you able to check on Naruto then? Minato asked. Well I, he paused when he realized something, they knew already. Yes. Kashina prompted. I um. Enough of this shit. Did you look after our son or not? Kashina said strongly. The game was up and she wanted answers. Well, I kind of let the village look after him. Make him into a responsible person before I came back to train him personally. Something similar to your life Minato, Jiraiya said. And what happened with Tsunade? Minato asked calmly as he saw Kashina struggling to stop herself from lashing out. She left two days after you did never seen her since. Now I know that I promised to look after the kid but I thought it would be better this way. He would grow up strong just like you Minato and then I would come and teach him everything I know. Besides, this village would be more than enough to help him grow. Jiraiya said easily. It was for Naruto's own good, Minato could understand that. Go ahead Kashina-chan. The moment Minato said those words was the moment when a powerful fist made contact with Jiraiya's face 
which sent him flying out of the tower and crashing to the ground. Jiraiya was a bit dazed, that was the epitome of a sucker punch, he never saw it coming at all. He could barely make out the redhead that was coming to him. Kashina was letting all her anger out as she made her way to that despicable man. Once she was in range she went on the man's stomach and proceeded to beat the living hell out of Jiraiya, all the while letting all her thoughts and emotions out. You bastard, you sorry excuse of a man. How could you, how could you betray us? Stab us in the back. Do you have any idea what we're going through? Naruto suffered, for twelve years, because of this village. My Sochi hates me, he hates me, she couldn't stop herself as she continued to let out all her frustration and fury on Jiraiya's face. Hot tears of regret and sorrow stung her eyes and her vision was blurred. When she felt someone force her away from Jiraiya she wanted to punch them until she realized it was Minato, calling to her. Calm down love. Calm down. Minato implored as he held Kashina tightly. Kashina buried her face in Minato's shoulder and cried with heart-wrenching sobs, it was too much for her. Minato waited until she was feeling better before he let go of her and made his way to his sensei, who was battered from Kashina's attack. He grabbed a hold of Jiraiya's shirt and yanked the old man to his feet. He created a Rasengan and carelessly observed it while he addressed Jiraiya. All the letters you sent to us were lies. Do you know how Naruto suffered? Even the beating Kashina had given you couldn't compare to all those reports. Nothing short of killing you could make up for your betrayal, Minato said indifferently. Jiraiya didn't even protest. He had no idea that Naruto had it that badly. He knew that the villagers were still angered by the Kyubi attack but he didn't think they would have made Naruto suffer so much. He didn't fight back when Kashina beat him to a bloody pulp. After hearing the reason he didn't think he deserved to retort. He was in pain but stayed strong and tried to make amends for his mistake, Minato, I didn't know. Of course you didn't, none of us did. You abandoned him to a life of hell and something like that is unforgivable. You will tell me where I can find Tsunade, after you wake up, Minato said seriously. I'm sorry, Jiraiya said remorsefully. Me too sensei, Minato said seriously then thrust the Rasengan to Jiraiya, making him hit a building and knocking him out instantly the pain from all the broken bones and inner damage too much to bear. Sigh. You, Minato pointed at one of the villagers, from the gathered crowd, and spoke, take him to the hospital and tell the nurses to treat him until he is stable, nothing more. No special treatment or they will be punished, understood? Minato ordered and the stunned villager did as ordered, albeit with a lot of help. Minato was sitting in his office sorting through the various reports his Anbu had collected related to the investigation on the members of the civilian council and it was not good. Most of them had practically committed treason by pilfering money from various projects meant to help the shinobi of Konoha perform their duties better. Anak told him someone was outside. Enter, Minato said, which revealed the person to be his secretary, she bowed to the Hokage and said. Hokage-sama, there is a man named Tazuna from Land of Waves, who is asking to see you personally, in regards to a C-rank mission. Didn't you tell him to go to the mission assignment department, where you would get an appropriate team, pertaining to his mission? Minato asked. I did Hokage-sama, but he insisted to meet you personally and said he wouldn't leave until he got a meeting with you. Minato's eyes narrowed in suspicion. Land of Waves had been quiet for some time, except of the fact that almost all of the trade from Wave was now being regulated by shipping magnate Gato. Deciding to hear him out, Minato ordered his secretary to bring Tazuna in. Tazuna-san, why did you want to meet me personally in regard to a simple C-rank escort mission, Minato asked. Hokage-sama, I have come to Konoha on the behalf of the Wave Daimyo to seek aid in removing Gato, who had taken over Land of Waves with the help of his goons and has effectively bankrupted its entire people. Even the Wave Daimyo is helpless as Gato had imprisoned his entire family with the help of our Daimyo's own samurai forces who Gato bought. The only reason I was even able to travel safely to Konoha was due to some of the samurai who are still loyal to the wave daimyo but they are very low in number and hence are unable to free him, Tazuna explained. Minato listened to his explanation but there were still some questions in his mind. You said in your mission request that you need a Konoha team to escort you back to your home and also mentioned that you were building a bridge which would connect the main island of wave to fire country. Minato said, but the unasked question was clear as to why lie to the mission assignment hall. 
I had to mask it as a simple escort mission due to the fact that Gato would do anything to stop the building of the bridge as it would render Gato's shipping monopoly moot. Also the fact that if Gato suspected anything, he would most likely murder my own family along with the family of the Wave Daimyo, and even the Wave Daimyo himself. The only reason he hasn't until now is to not draw any attention to him. I was also given this scroll from the Wave Daimyo himself to give you Hokage-sama. Tazuna finished and gave the scroll to Minato. After one of the Anbu who belonged to the Hyuga clan checked the scroll, Minato opened it and read its content. Wave Daimyo had written what Tazuna had already explained to him. In addition to that, Wave Daimyo had also said that he would agree to have an exclusive trade alliance with the Land of Fire. It was quite a plus factor as Wave was rich in resources and was also placed in a strategic location which was quite important to trade with the rest of the nations via sea and would put the Land of Fire in a favorable position if they had an exclusive trading contract with Land of Waves but it could also incite their shinobi nation rivals to get active as they would see it as Konoha getting way too powerful. Weighing the different pros and cons, Minato decided that the pros outweighed the cons. Very well, I accept Tazuna-san. I will assign you one of our best Anbu teams but they would work in the shadows to remove Gato and free the Wave Daimyo and would only show themselves if it truly necessary. I will also assign you a Genin team to keep up the ruse that you only came here to get a team for a simple C-rank escort mission, Minato explained after which he asked Tazuna to go and told him to come tomorrow to the mission assignment room to get a Genin team for his escort mission. Call Tenzo, I have an assignment for him and his team. Minato said to one of the hidden Anbu in his office. With the Anbu gone, Minato thought about which Genin team to send with Tazuna. Most of the experienced Genin teams were out on mission, while those that were currently available in Konoha were not led by Junin who could handle the mission, if Gato decided to target Tazuna by missing ninja like Tazuna said he would. When he thought about it there was one Genin team which was perfect for this mission team 7 led by both Kakashi and Kashina. Kakashi is a well-rounded shinobi whose reputation was known throughout the shinobi world, while Kashina is as strong as him if he doesn't use Hiraishin no Jutsu, Flying Reijin Jutsu, with specializing in Kenjutsu, Fuinjutsu and her unique Ninjutsu derived from her usage of chakra chains. Even the members of Team 7 were nothing to scoff at, both Naruto and Naruko were high genin to low chunin level while Sasuke was low to mid genin level and he was sure even Sakura would have acquired some skills with both Kashina and Kakashi as their sensei. This also would hopefully give him a chance to interact with Naruto, something he had been shying from due to his own fears. But he would let the junin sensei decide whether their team was ready or not. Next day Naruto was meditating on training ground 7 waiting for rest of his team. When he sensed someone coming towards him and recognized the chakra signatures as Sasuke's but it did not bother him as his interactions with the Uchiha had been professional even those were rare. Sasuke had decided to come early to the training ground to do some practice and while he could practice in the private Uchiha training grounds but had decided to train in his team's training ground due to the fact that the training dummies in the Uchiha training grounds have been sent for repairs. When he saw Naruto already there he got an idea. He knew Naruto was stronger than him and with all training he had been doing, he wanted to test himself against Naruto. Hey Dobi, Sasuke said still calling him Dobi despite knowing that Naruto was stronger than him. Naruto just ignored him as he wasn't going to respond to a degrading name. Seeing Naruto ignore him angered Sasuke greatly but he kept himself in check and decided to call Naruto by his name. Naruto, Sasuke said, yes? Naruto asked opening his eyes and looked towards Sasuke curiously. Fight me, Sasuke said, no, Naruto said, and raised his hand when Sasuke was about to interrupt him. At least not until one of our sensei are present, according to laws of Konoha Genin of Konoha can only spar either under the supervision of a shinobi of at least special Jonin rank or during Chunin exams, Naruto explained making Sasuke nod in understanding. After some time all the members of Team 7 were assembled, when Sasuke saw his chance to have the spar with Naruto. Kakashi Sensei, Kashina Sensei I would like to have a spar with Naruto. Sasuke said as he looked towards both his sensei. Kakashi looked towards Kashina asking for permission when Kashina gave him a nod. Kashina wanted to see whether Naruto would use his Sharingan on Sasuke or not, as Naruko was only able to force him due to her own chakra chains. Both Sasuke and Naruto stood facing each other with Kakashi in the middle of it. Okay, 
This is just a spar that means no killing blows are allowed, if I see any one of you going for the killing blow that would not only disqualify you but I would also make sure that you would be removed from Shinobi Corps and sent to Konoha's correction facility. Kakashi said as he looked into the eyes of both of the boys to make sure they realized that they were serious. Both boys came forward and did the seal of confrontation, after which they distanced themselves from one another. As soon as Kakashi started the match Sasuke charged at Naruto using chakra to increase his speed and was within Naruto's guard within seconds, aiming a brutal punch at Naruto's face. Naruto seeing this turned his body and redirected Sasuke's punch with his arm and punched Sasuke in the stomach with his other arm that took his entire breathing capacity for a short period of time. Sasuke had to move quickly as Naruto wasn't done, jumping back a few times he managed to give himself breathing space. Getting a new resolve, the Uchiha charged once again and started a close-ranged fight throwing punches and kicks using the infamous Uchiha interceptor fist, but Naruto was dodging all of them effortlessly. Naruto quickly got bored of the taijutsu match, seeing a gap in Sasuke's defenses he punched the Uchiha in the face sending him flying towards a tree, knocking him out. With that Naruto just walked away, while Kakashi went towards the Uchiha to see how much damage he had sustained. When he was sure Sasuke was fine, Kakashi turned towards Naruto, his visible eye narrowed. Naruto, this was just a friendly spar, you didn't need to be that hard, Kakashi said with an undertone of anger in his voice. This was a friendly spar which is the only reason I knocked him out and not killed him. Sasuke needs to stop overestimating his skills and underestimating others. He needs to lose his arrogance, because it will one day get him killed. And what better way than to make him realize that his own teammates are more skilled than him? Naruto finished in a monotone voice, but Kakashi realized that Naruto was worried about his teammate, which made him happy and nodded towards Naruto while giving him his trademark eye smile, while Kashina was also happy that Naruto cared for his teammates. After Sasuke recovered, he was furious that he was beaten by Naruto so easily but decided to double his training to defeat him. Team 7 decided to go to the mission hall. Kakashi and Kashina had decided that their team was ready for C-rank mission. Well three of the members were but Kakashi was unable to find any way to break Sakura from her fangirl's way and thought a C-rank might do the trick. Hokage Tower Team 7 entered the mission assignment for their mission with Kashina ready to ask for a C-rank mission, but they were surprised to see Minato there as it was rare for the Hokage to assign mission himself, but Kashina knew the reason as she had talked to Minato last night about the wave mission and given Minato her consent as her team was most probably the best choice for the mission as she and Kakashi could handle anything together. Add to the fact that an Anbu team would be accompanying them in the shadows reassured her that her team would be safe. Team 7 reporting for duty? Kashina said, okay, now Team 7 we have a long list of D-rank mission. Minato started but was interrupted by Kashina. I believe my team is ready for a C-rank mission, Minato-kun, Kashina said with getting different reactions from her students. Sasuke looked excited while Sakura looked like she was scared but tried desperately to hide it while taking a small step closer to Sasuke. Naruko looked determined while Naruto kept his face impassive. Alright then, I have a perfect mission for you. It consists of protecting a civilian from thieves and bandits as he travels back to his homeland, in the land of waves. He looked towards her secretary. You will go and bring Tazuna now. Hi Hokage-sama, the secretary bowed and left. After a while the door opened to reveal an old man who looked tipsy for the time of the day and had a canteen of alcohol. Tazuna was a grey-haired bespectacled man with a large beard and dark eyes. He wore a sleeveless v-neck shirt with an obi, pants and a pair of sandals. He also carried a towel around his neck and wore a pointed hat on his head. He looked at the team with heavy scrutiny and frowned at what he saw. What is the meaning of this Hokage? I hired Shinobi to protect me, not small children barely off their diapers. That blonde shrimp over there, you can't possibly convince me that he's a Shinobi. The old man said keeping his pretense. Naruto heard snickers coming from Sakura while he could practically feel Sasuke's smirk. While his height wasn't saying much, the old man, their client, was pushing. Now he could think of many things to do in order to prove that he is a shinobi. Of course, many of the possibilities included skills that he just could not reveal yet. That said, he had settled for something more subtle. With a slight flick of his wrist, earning narrowed eyes from those who managed to follow his movements, a kanai traveled fast to the canteen that Tazuna was holding. In less than a second, 
The kanai went straight through the canteen, splashing all the alcohol at the old man instantly sobering him up. Sakura fell on her butt on the floor as the kanai passed mere inches from her nose. Sasuke looked at the blonde in alarm, not remembering him being that good before while Naruko covered her mouth in surprise. It matters little whether you believe I am a shinobi or not, in the end, all it takes is that kanai going straight at your neck, Naruto said. Kashina simply scratched her head in embarrassment for her son and student. Ah Naruto-kun, we can't attack the client you know, Kashina said while Naruto settled for a smirk, but bowed towards the client. My apologies for attacking you Tazuna-san, I just felt the need to convince you that I'm more than capable to protect you from thieves and bandits. Tazuna hesitantly nodded, though he felt like the kid was placing a knife inches from his neck. Minato taking control of the situation cleared his throat and addressed Team 7. Okay moving on, this AC rank mission consisting of protecting Tazuna throughout his travel back to Land of Waves. Go pack the supplies for the trip. You'll have two hours before you meet up with Tazuna by the gates. Tazuna nodded and left the office as fast as he could, most probably to replace his canteen of alcohol. I'd like to speak with you Naruto, Minato said as he noticed everyone leaving. Naruto stopped but didn't turn around as the rest of team left to prepare for the mission. Would you turn around Naruto? Minato asked. Naruto faced the Hokage with an impassive face. How are you Naruto? And how is your training progressing with your mother? Minato asked. I am fine Hokage-sama. My training also goes well. Right now Kashina sensei is working on my strength. Naruto said in a monotone voice but made sure to emphasize their names and titles which made Minato flinch. Kashina had told him that Naruto never called her Kasan. While Kashina was able to put a strong front but he knew that it broke her heart. Very good, Minato said, if that is all Hokage-sama, I would like to go and pack for the mission, Naruto said. Actually yes, I would like to teach you a special technique. It is your birthright and as your father, it is my duty to teach you the Rasengan. Minato said. I refuse. Naruto said with narrowed eyes as he unknowingly began to leak key while Minato was shocked as he thought that Naruto would at least be interested to learn from him, he is the Hokage. I do not need either your or Kashina sensei help to fulfill my goals. The only reason I accepted Kashina as my sensei is because if I didn't I would have to join the Genin reserves. How dare you think that after everything happened to me I would even think about accepting your help. Maybe it is because you don't know the extent of it. You think the people of Konoha love and respect you so much don't you? I will tell you exactly how they honored your wish for me after you sealed the soul of Kayubi into me and left me. While no one dared to attack me physically, that didn't stop them from verbally abuse me. One of the villagers said that my father was most probably just a bastard who slept with my whore of a mother and had me. You are one of the most powerful shinobi to walk the shinobi nations and yet you left in the fear of one man. You let fear rule you and left your son while taking your daughter away with you. What would have happened if that man would have come and kidnapped me? Yes I know all about the Kayubi incident Sandame Gigi told me everything, so much for the great Yandaimi Hokage, who can't even make his own villagers follow his wish and protect his own son. The only reason the villagers changed their attitude towards me is not because they think it was wrong or because they love you, but because they fear you. Minato was shaking with rage and sadness at this but couldn't counter as everything Naruto said was truth while Naruto just ignored him and continued. When I didn't fill my parents' name in my academy form because I didn't know the names, the Chunin instructor there just said that they probably abandoned me because I was just a bastard who his own parents didn't want. I just didn't know how right he was, Naruto said. The last statement barely above a whisper his voice didn't have any trace of anger but was full of sadness which made not only Minato but Anbu hiding in the office full of sadness as well as they used to guard him before Yugo and Shisui were assigned as his permanent guards. When Minato went to say something Naruto just left the office. Minato was shaking with rage and sadness and as soon as Naruto left he unleashed such a monstrous key that the hidden Anbu in his office were forced to reveal themselves and were on their knees gasping for air as visions of their deaths flashed through their eyes due to the potent key. His own eternal Mangekyo Sharingan eyes activated which he obtained after transplanting his father's eyes. The same eyes he used to save this village from the Kayubi and that masked man were spinning rapidly. That's it Minato decided. He would make the villagers whether shinobi or civilians realize that how they treated Naruto was wrong not because he was his son but because it is wrong to treat anyone like that. 
Village Gate Naruto reached the gate after he had collected all the supplies necessary for a basic C rank escort mission. Yugo had drilled it into him about how different missions needed different supplies, and how being underpacked or overpacked could lead to dangerous situations. When he got to the gate, he noticed Naruko was already there with Kashina, while waiting for the other members of the team. Soon Sakura and Sasuke also came. As soon as they all gathered, Kakashi also came with the client and they were off to Wave Country. Sakura was making small talk with Tazuna about Wave Country, while Naruko was talking with Naruto well it was mostly Naruko talking while Naruto just replied to her but Naruko was just happy that she could make some bond with her Nissan, while Kashina looked at them happy that the siblings were bonding but there also was well hidden longing to her expression but she was able to hide it well. Fighting in a spar is a different, let's see how well would they do against a true enemy shinobi, Kakashi thought as he sensed two foreign chakra right in front of the group and signaled Kashina to not interfere unless necessary making her nod. Soon the group passed a small puddle of water in the road, when they all felt a sudden burst of chakra. The two shinobi appeared out of puddle with a single gauntlet on one of their hand connected to each other with a single chain. These were Maizu and Gozu, the demon brothers of the mist. The Kiri missing Nin sprang into action as soon as they spotted Kakashi in front of the group but before they could wrap their chain around Kakashi, both of them were yanked towards a tree due to a kanai getting struck in their chain and before they could free themselves, they were wrapped in ninja wire with the end of the ninja wire being held by Naruto. Well done Naruto-kun, Kashina said as Kakashi went over to the demon brothers to interrogate them which led to the revelation of the real need of Tazuna to the whole team as Kakashi and Kashina were already aware of it. Kashina then told Team 7 the whole mission while leaving out about the Anbu as it could lead to their discovery or alerting Gato making him hire more shinobi protection. It also led to the revelation that the Demon Brothers worked with Zabuza Momochi, one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the Mist, also known as the Demon of the Hidden Mist. They decided to leave the Demon Brothers tied up to the trees and unconscious for the authorities to arrest them while Kashina sealed their chakra. When they reached the shore, they took a boat from the border of fire owned by Kaji, who was an accomplice of Tazuna but was a cowardly man proven by the fact that he refused to start the motor of the boat in the fear that Gato would get to know about it. After leaving them on the shore of Land of Waves, Kaji leaves them immediately starting the motor of his boat. How far is it to your home Tazuna? Kakashi asked. Not far, Tazuna said, only a couple of miles from here. This was the closest Kaji could land us without being spotted by Gato's spies inside the village. The group set off for the bridge builder's home, the four young genin all fell in tents, as if someone was watching them. Unknown to them they were being watched, hidden in the trees were a pair of figures. One was well over six feet tall, dark hair and bandages covering lower half of his face. Strapped to the man's back was a massive sword that was as long as the man himself. A smaller figure standing next to the man wore a uniform with a white mask that hid its face with four wavy lines on the forehead part of the mask. That's Uzumaki Kashina and Hitaki Kakashi, the taller man growled, if it were just Kakashi I could have handled him but Uzumaki Kashina, she is a legit s rank shinobi, I had heard rumors that she faked her death along with her husband Yandaimi Hokage and recently returned to Konoha, seems the rumors were true. What should we do Zabuza Sama? the shorter figure asked. We retreat, Zabuza said, we can't fight both Kakashi and Uzumaki, even if we had the demon brothers and those brats are unknowns, even if they are brats. Let's go Haku. I have to call in some favors if we want to complete this job. The shadowy shinobi leapt from their places and faded into the mist. You noticed right? Kakashi said. Yes, it seems things are going to become a lot worse before it becomes better, Kashina said. Tsunami, Inari, I am back, Tazuna called as they entered a two-story house. An attractive young woman with long blue hair came rushing out of another room. Father. The woman cried as she hugged Tazuna, you're home. Yes, I am, Tazuna chuckled, and these brave shinobi are here to help us. Oh please come in, Tsunami ushered, thank you very much for seeing my father home safely and for helping us with our situation. It is no problem, we are happy to help, Kashina said. Tazuna is there a place where we can all sit and discuss our next course of action? There is enough room in the kitchen, Tazuna said. Tsunami, where is Inari? He is down at the docks, Tsunami replied. He should be home soon. 
With the Demon Brothers the two Demon Brothers were unconscious when five Kiri Hunter Nin dropped on their location. Finally found them, one of them said while one of them woke them up. As soon as the Demon Brothers woke up, they were greeted with the sight of five Kiri Hunter Nin and knew unlike Haku they knew these were the real deal but before they could speak, one of the Hunter Nin, they assumed the leader spoke. No, we are not here to kill you, if we were we already would have, we are here on the behalf of the Godem Mizukaj, as Yagura the Yandaimi Mizukaj is dead, and before you ask why should you trust us, one we didn't kill you, while the ones loyal to the Yandaimi would already have and two. Here the hunter Nin removed his mask, to show a middle-aged man with blue hair which were styled in a moused up manner. His left eye was blue while he wore an eye patch on his right eye. He also wore a talisman in each ear with a kanji for a humble form of, to hear, written on them twice on each side. Ao Senpei, Gozu said as he recognized the same who trained both of them before they were sent under Zabuza's command and the man who warned Zabuza to be patient before attempting coup on Yandaimi with his team and said that they were still organizing but Zabuza didn't listen as he was too overconfident and prideful believing he would be able to defeat Yagura. Yes, I was sent by the new Mizukaj to retrieve Zabuza and his team as we have finally won the war against Yagura and his tyranny. Now I need your help to find him and convince him to come back to Kirigakir no Sato, I will also tell you the identity of the Godem in front of Zabuza. Ao said while making everything clear. Both Gozu and Maizu nodded as the other cut the ninja wire and destroyed the chakra suppression seal on them. As soon as the demon brothers stood up, the seven of them vanished. Tazuna's home the six shinobi sat down at the kitchen table with Tazuna and Tsunami. Okay everyone listens up, Kashina said. This mission, while it has had some unexpected bumps in the road, will only get more difficult. While we were making our way here, Kakashi and I sensed two people watching us. These two people did leave after observing us for a bit, Kakashi picked up the conversation there. We can only surmise that these two were comrades of the Demon Brothers, and were waiting to ambush us. Why didn't they then? Sasuke asked. Probably because they didn't feel confident taking on two Janin, Naruto said. A successful ambush means scoring the most damage while sustaining the least amount of risk to them. What's the point of an ambush if you get hurt or killed in the process? Kashina and Kakashi nodded at the explanation. Naruto is correct, Kakashi said. Konoha's most recent information on the Demon Brothers was that they are aligned with Zabuza Momochi, a former Seven Swordsman of the Mist which was confirmed when we interrogated them. This mission is easily a rank, could be even more difficult if Zabuza after seeing Kashina and I, decides to find more help. We are no way near ready for this type of mission, Sakura moaned. No you are not, Kashina said frankly, but it is too late to change anything, so Kakashi and I are going to use this time to get you all as ready as possible. How can you possibly train us for this sort of thing? Sakura asked. We are not sure, Kakashi admitted. But this is the life you have all chosen, mission are not always cut and dry. Incidents happen on missions and circumstances will change, and not always for the better. I am sorry that I have dragged you all into this mess, Tazuna apologized, but we are desperate, we had no other option. If the bridge is not completed then Gato will completely rule this land and continue to strangle its people. Don't worry Tazuna, we will do all we can to stop this SBAG, Naruko said. Tazuna gave the exuberant blonde a thankful smile. Anyway, tonight we will relax, Kakashi said. Make sure you all get a good night's sleep because tomorrow, we hit the ground running. After the delicious dinner provided by Tsunami, the Jonin sent their teams off to bed, while Tazuna made his way towards them. Not to be rude Kakashi-san, Kashina-san, Tazuna begin, but what about our daimyo and his family? Do not worry about them, Tazuna-san. Kakashi said, the Anbu team sent with us is already on it, while Tazuna breathed a sigh of relief. As Tazuna went to his room to sleep, Kakashi was about to do the same but Kashina stopped him. Kakashi, before the mission, Minato asked to speak to me privately about Team 7 Inches Kashina started, about their skill level and how they interact with each other, after listening to everything he decided to make some changes. Naruto, Naruko and I will no longer be part of Team 7 Inches when Kakashi looked like he was about to protest she held her hand up to stop him, I don't want this any more than you do, but Minato-kun explained his reasons for this to me. Our team is not the standard 4 shinobi cell and while, that happens sometimes, we are the only that has 2 junin sensei on it. 
Many of the shinobi would see it as favoritism, there is also the fact that this team doesn't have the right repo with each other, and before you say anything, we both know it's true. Hence it was decided that, Minato would create a new team which would be led by me with Naruto and Naruko, while you will lead team 7 with Sakura and Sasuke. We both would be getting a new genin which would be assigned to us by Minato-kun when we return. Kashina finished while Kakashi nodded. While sad that the first team to pass his bell test would be broken up, he knew it was for the best. While Kashina and Kakashi were having their discussion, Naruto was in his bed sleeping but you could tell from the discomfort on his face that he was having trouble sleeping. He suddenly found himself in a sewer and he was standing on water which came up till his knees. He looked around and could see a lot of pipes on the walls and ceilings. Suddenly he heard little tremors which sounded like breathing, putting him on alert and making him activate his Sharingan. He followed the sound and came upon the biggest cage he had ever seen. On the other side of the cage was complete darkness then suddenly a rumbling earth tremor filled the sewer and Naruto was suddenly gazing into two blood red silted eyes that bored into his very being. So, the voice was so deep and heavy that it shook the room. The blood red eyes analyzed him for a moment, narrowing when they saw the Sharingan and then continued, my jailer finally decided to grace me with his presence. So you are the soul of Kayubi that was sealed inside of me by Yandaimi Sama, but if it is so why is it that I can see and feel enormous amount of chakra from you? Naruto asked in a monotone voice while having an impassive face hiding his fear and curiosity. No need to use that impassive mask of yours in front of me, I have been inside you since your birth. I have watched as the villagers ignored your existence, I watched as the old Hokage tried to keep you safe and take away the loneliness away. I watched as you were attacked for the first time when you unlocked those cursed eyes of yours, I watched as you were trained by those two who you call your siblings and I watched as you lost one of them. I also know how hard you try to stop yourself from failing for your cursed clan's hatred, but I know you will eventually fall for it as have the ones before you. Before I answer your question, on how do I possess my chakra, I have a proposition for you, Kayubi said. What is it? Naruto questioned. I will show you my memories of the night you were born and before you say that it could be false, I promise on my honor as a biju to show you nothing but truth and unlike you humans, we biju take these oaths very seriously, Kayubi said. Naruto thought over it, summarizing that he had nothing to lose and gave a nod to Kayubi. As soon as he did, the whole place was engulfed in a white light and next thing he knew, he was above in the sky as he saw his mother giving birth to him and his sister as his father stabilized her seal. He saw as an old woman and an anbu took both him and his sister while his father worked on his mother's seal. Suddenly a man with an orange mask with black flame-like pattern killed the old woman and the anbu and took him hostage. He saw the whole attack from the extraction of Kayubi from his mother to the attack on the village and finally when his father were able to teleport the Kayubi to a location where he, Naruko and his mother were. He saw as his father put Kayubi under a genjutsu using his Mangekyo Sharingan but when Naruto looked closely at his eyes, he realized that they were not Mangekyo but the next stage i.e. eternal Mangekyo Sharingan while his mother used her chakra chains to hold the Kayubi down. As Minato started the sealing ritual, Kayubi broke off from the genjutsu and attacked him and his sisters realizing that he was about to be sealed, while both of his parents used their bodies as shields to protect them. Naruto wanted to deny this but knew it was the truth due to the Kayubi. Next he saw his father complete the sealing ritual as what looked like chakra in the form of fox enter Naruko while that he saw a spirit shaped in the form fox enter his infant body. As Naruto thought about the sealing, he realized that it really looked like the soul of the Kayubi was sealed inside him, while the chakra was sealed under Naruko, but that wasn't a reason to abandon him. As he focused on the memory again, and saw a blonde woman healing his mother and father, while an old man with long white hair was talking. To prevent this from happening again, the guy just disappeared without a trace, it was as if he never came here in the first place. We will be more prepared but we have to take precaution, the old man said. You're right, sensei. He infiltrated Konoha without anyone noticing and extracted the Kayubi from my wife after she had given birth, Minato said as he held Naruko. Wait, wouldn't that result in Kashina's death? The blonde woman asked in surprise. I was thinking the same thing, Tsunade, but for some reason here I am, Kashina said with a tired smile as she held Naruto. Maybe it was the way the masked guy extracted the Kayubi out of her body. Do you remember anything of that, Kashina? The old man asked. All I remember is pain, 
Jiraiya, Kashina said with a frown, that's all. Just great, Jiraiya sighed and then turned to Minato. This is bad, Minato. That man's attack was nearly flawless and he knew exactly what he was looking for. If his reasoning for attacking Konoha was its destruction then he did a pretty good job in coming close. I know. He knew exactly where to go without being detected and it's obvious now that his main objective was the Kayubi, Minato said. Something tells me he's not done with Konoha or us, Kashina said worriedly as she looked at her babies. You always have a knack of attracting the worst kind of enemies, Minato, Tsunade said with shake of her head. But I don't even know the guy, Minato protested. Does it matter? You're the one who is well known around the elemental nations and that's all it takes, Tsunade said evenly. You're right, Minato said sadly. Okami, our children were nearly killed, Kashina said. That's not the only problem at this point, Minato said. What are you talking about? Tsunade said. Notice a big red demon fox missing. I found a way to alter the Shiki Fujin in separating the Biju's soul from its very own chakra. I sealed the chakra into Naruko and the soul into Naruto. Theoretically the result should have been my death, but I think since I performed a different version of Shiki Fujin my life was spared, Minato said. I knew you were a genius but this? Even I have to admit I'm impressed, Jiraiya said in shock. Are you sure that's what you did? Kashina asked in concern. I'm positive. I saw the soul and chakra separate from each other before sealing them into Naruto and Naruko, Minato said confidently. My poor babies, Kashina said sadly. Since I separated the two key aspects that make a biju whole then I don't think the Kayubi can be extracted without both children being present when it happens, Minato said. You mean you need both kids together to get the Kayubi? Tsunade asked. Yes. Minato looked at his wife seriously. That man might come back and try the same thing again. That could end badly for Naruto and Naruko. We can't stay here if that is the case. You want us to leave Konoha? Kashina asked in surprise. Yeah, it's the only way to protect the village and the children. That man could come after us for the children, and since he will need both kids to release the Kayubi then. I hope you're not suggesting what I think you're suggesting, Kashina hissed suspiciously. I'm sorry Kashina Koi, but we can't take both children with us. No, I am not leaving any of my babies. What the hell are you thinking, Minato kun? Kashina shouted angrily. Hear me out. We won't be leaving anyone alone. Jiraiya and Tsunade can look after and train one while we groom the other, Minato said and shrunk as Kashina fixed him with a withering glare. They are not objects to just experiment with. They're our children. Our children, of all the ideas that you've come up with, Minato kun, this is the worst. Minato's shoulders sagged. He began to see what she was talking about. He sighed. You're right. We'll just have to figure out something else. I support that idea, Jiraiya said. Everyone looked at the old man with wide eyes. What? Tsunade inquired warningly. It's solid. Since Naruto and Naruko can't be near each other yet, then this is the best we can do. I think Naruto should stay. Don't start with that stupid prophecy garbage again, Kashina shouted angrily. No, it's not that. I just think that it would be the right thing to do. I'm his godfather. It wouldn't hurt. To hell with that. It is absolutely ludicrous. You can't make such a huge decision based on a half assed belief that the children must be separated or that man would not only find them but release the Kayubi as well. Tsunade fumed. We can't take any chances. If we make a mistake, it could possibly result in Naruto and Naruko getting killed. Jiraiya argued. Exactly what do you think would happen if that masked man came back and tried to take the Kayubi from the child you left behind? it would still lead to the same result, Tsunade said. That's why we would be here. Minato and Kashina could protect Naruko and we could easily protect Naruto with the aid of Konoha. That man will not be a match for Tusanin, Jiraiya boasted. You're right, Sensei and this way we can be assured that both kids will at least be safe and the Kayubi cannot be freed, Minato said. I refuse. What the hell has gotten into you? Don't make me slap you, Minato, Kashina warned. Kashina Koi, we don't have much time to do this before people find out. It's the best that we can offer our kids at the moment. We won't be abandoning Naruto. He'll stay with Jiraiya and Tsunade. And we'll tell him all about you guys and what great parents you are, right Tsunade Han? Jiraiya asked with a grin. This isn't right, 
This isn't right and you know it, Tsunade said seriously. We have little choice, Tsunade. Don't worry, he won't be in your care for too long. We'll be back for him when the time is right, Minato said. I can't leave him. Please Minato Koi, don't make leave him. I love him so much. Don't make me do this, Kashina pleaded as she looked at her son who was in her gentle embrace. Sochi Kun. I'm sorry Kashina Koi, but we have to. We'll be back for him soon enough and we'll be a family again. I promise, Minato said with conviction. I just can't. He's my Sochi. Can't you see you're making this painful for me? Kashina looked at her husband with a sorrowful gaze. Minato's eyes soften. He understood what she was going through. It was really tough decision to make. He would never grow with us. He would never have that type of childhood that kids need. Can you really expect this to go in our favor? What if he grows to hate the parents that left him behind? I just can't deal with that. If you're so insistent in leaving for the safety of our kids in the village then. Let me stay with him in Konoha, Kashina said. I would love that more than anything Kashina-chan but Naruko will need you, Minato said. What do you mean? Kashina said. She only has the chakra of the Kayubi. It's malevolent and malicious, adding to the fact that it does not have a soul and it will remain aimless with no focal point then Naruko could lose herself to the chakra indefinitely, Minato said. Kashina understood immediately what Minato was implying, you need my chakra chains. Minato nodded his head grimly. Then why don't you stay with Naruto? Kashina questioned. Because enemies would know that Minato's alive and that Naruto is his son. They'll come after the kid, no doubt about that, Jiraiya said seriously. Kashina's mouth formed a thin line as the dreaded news was given to her. Will they ever get a break? If, if you're going to leave Naruto here then people should not know who his parents are. We can't have him live anywhere in Konoha where he could be an easy target either, Tsunade said. I own an estate just outside Konoha. No one else knows that it exists because of the genjutsu that I put on it. You could use that place as a home to look after Naruto and train him to be stronger, Minato said. You want us to train him? Tsunade questioned. Yes, I want you to teach him everything you know. I know you guys are very capable in making him a great shinobi, Minato said. This is so unfair, Kashina cried. Why do we have to do this? We can just stay in Konoha and see how things turn out. Everyone understood that Kashina was falling into desperation. She loved her children and as an Uzumaki family was very important to her. No one noticed that Naruto's eyes had briefly opened, and they were red. I'm really sorry, Kashina-chan, but for the sake of Konoha and our children we have to do what's right. It isn't easy for me either. I love Naruto and this is hard for me too. Kashina only whimpered as she looked down to her now sleeping son. The tears wouldn't stop. Don't worry, Kashina, he'll be in good hands, Jiraiya said. Promise me, Kashina whispered. What? Jiraiya asked. Promise me, you'll look after him. You'll help him grow to be a responsible and loving boy. You'll tell him all about us and how much we love him. You'll train him to be the best shinobi he can be. You'll love him just as we do. Kashina was serious and made sure they knew it. Yeah, sure. I promise, Jiraiya said, a bit confused in Kashina's behavior. Kashina turned to Tsunade. I promise, Tsunade said, although her response was very unenthusiastic. Kashina looked at them for a moment and then nodded, we'll send letters every month with presents for you to pick up. I want you to send us letters on Naruto's progress every month. If they are problems then you must inform us immediately. I don't want my Sochi to grow up alone or unwanted, Kashina said. Yes, Jiraiya said in exasperation, however, Tsunade only looked away in thought. Then we have an agreement, Minato said with a hint of excitement. I really don't like this, but if you're right Minato then we can't endanger anyone, Kashina said and proceeded to repeatedly kiss Naruto's forehead. She looked at her son. Ka-chan loves you. And Tu-san loves you, Minato added with a grin as he rubbed Naruto's head. The image started to distort until they view changed and Naruto found himself back in the mindscape. He looked around in surprise. What happened next? Naruto asked the Kayubi, nothing important, now the answer to your question of how do I possess chakra, if I am only the soul of the Kayubi. You see, when your father performed an alternative version of Shikifu Jin, dead demon consuming seal, he thought he sealed my chakra into your sister, while sealing the soul into you. 
But what really happened was he divided my chakra into half, as we biju are beings of chakra. Our soul is not different from our chakra. So the yang half as it represents the life energy took the form of pure chakra, while I, the yin half as I represent the spiritual half took the form of the spirit. Your father had good intentions, depending on how you look at it, but he didn't fully understand the biju, Kayubi said. Naruto thought about what the Kayubi said and what he saw, even if the memory was true, that gave his family a reason to just abandon him and give him to someone else to raise him, but on the other hand his father just wanted to protect his family and the village. No, Naruto decided, even if everything was truth, even then he won't forgive them and especially not his godparents who decided to abandon him. He would talk to both of them though, as everyone should be given a chance to explain them, but if he didn't like their explanation, then there wouldn't be any more chances. All these thoughts went through his mind as his Sharingan spun rapidly. He still had one question though. Why did you show me all these memories? What do you gain from it? asked Naruto. First, I don't like anyone making their decisions without having full facts since most of the humans judged us biju this way. Second, I am composed of yin chakra. I am more cooperative but it doesn't mean I fully trust humans especially of your clan with those cursed eyes even though due to my chakra mixing into your own has made your eyes more powerful than any other uchiha in the past and finally since i showed you the truth of the night of your birth i was hoping you would allow me access to your senses as it gets boring around here and change the state of your mindscape it is unbefitting of me kayubi explained naruto thought about it and was in favor of allowing the kayubi access and change the state of his mindscape as even he didn't like his mindscape as a sewer but he still had some questions. I agree to all of your demands, Naruto said choosing the word demands rather than request, knowing it would be good to play to the Kayubi's ego which was proven correct from the smirk on Kayubi's face, but I don't know how to do all of those things. And would you have access to my senses all the time? Also, what do you mean by more cooperative? You just need to think, to do all of those things as it is your mindscape and no, you can cut me off whenever you want, as I said at your mindscape. Finally I am more cooperative than my other half, my young chakra, as it more dominant of us too. I kind of feel bad for your sister but eh, this is what your father chose, Kayubi said. Naruto then left his mindscape after making the appropriate changes making his mindscape represent the forest around Konoha, and giving Kayubi access to his senses. He knew as soon as he woke up he would have to talk to Kashina about it. Kayubi became comfortable to his new surroundings, which were much better than the sewer as he started at place Naruto was at before going to sleep. Next morning as soon as Naruto woke up, he knew he had to talk to Kashina about what he learned. So as soon as he was done with his morning routine, he went outside the room he saw Naruko seating on the sofa reading a scroll. As soon as Naruko saw Naruto she smiled towards him. Good morning, Nisan, Naruko greeted, morning, Naruko. What time is it? Naruto said. It is still pretty early in the morning. Tazuna is going to leave for the bridge in the afternoon. Ka-san said we will be accompanying her for his protection while Kakashi Sensei protects Tsunami and Inari as Ka-san suspects Gato might target them. Kakashi Sensei will also train Sakura and Sasuke today. Naruto nodded at that information and was about to ask Naruko about Kashina but before he could. Nisan, Naruko said. Ka-san also informed me that once we return to Konoha, we and Ka-san will be removed from Team 7 to form a team of our own with a new member while Kakashi Sensei will be taking both Sakura and Sasuke with a new member of their own. Naruto just nodded at that information and then asked, Naruko do you know where Kashina Sensei is? She is currently in the guest room Nisan, Naruko said, as she saw Naruto go towards Kashina's room. Nisan, where are you going? Sakura and Sasuke are training outside, we could join them, Naruko suggested. Not right now, I need to talk to Kashina Sensei, Naruto said. Will you tell me? Naruko asked cautiously, knowing her relationship with Naruto was rocky at best, not yet, maybe after I talk to Kashina Sensei, Naruto answered as he went towards her room, but before he hid he gave a small but sincere smile to Naruko causing her to gasp and filling her heart with hope that she could still get her Nissan back. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.